Which has got conch sales and most full has been ninjas got all three categories. Yeah. It's all about the best players on the categories, that's for sure. Wow, we must have really rolled poorly because Proton John has been going and they have all have stars. Jeez. Anyway, let me get with some great ace attorney. Uh, just finished two ads. Did I miss something? No, no. I was just setting up for the next uh, game. Honestly, I wish I could turn off ads but keep the subscription on. But I think like even if you're not affiliate, uh, you still get ads because of how Twitch is going. So it sucks. No worries, Alberto. It's glad to see you. I'm sorry we couldn't get to play a game together. Uh, maybe another time where we can play. Uh, at least we could try playing like uh, Bowser, Mo Bowser Mode or Koopathlon. But um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I hope you take get some good rest. Nice seeing you. And I'll catch you later for sure. All right. Take it easy, my friend. All right. I have that. All right, cool. So, all right then. Let's see how long this investigation is because I might be able to push out for it because if it's only lasts for like, like 30 minutes to an hour, maybe, but we'll see. I did take a look how long this chapter can be. Uh, I'll see if I can finish up fast. Because again, this Ace Attorney has been going on for a long time. And I kind of want to get it as done as soon as possible. So I will probably still do the whole reading it a little bit faster and blah, blah, blah. And all the blah, blah, blahs. Blah, okay, blah, blah. well. Hi, Lissa. Speaking of blah, 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 I'm heading off. Sounds good. Thank you for joining. Get some good rest. Oh, it was a lot of fun. I know I missed most of it, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm glad I was able will see you guys. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. It was glad to see you uh, on anyway as well. Hope you mm -hmm. take care. Good Sweet. rest. Yep. Bye. 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 My mat is slightly because it's not like lighting up. I just noticed that it doesn't light up all the way. Hmm. Wonder, wonder what the, that's that up. Anyway, alrighty then. Let's read this. Oh, this room. It's been too long. It hasn't changed in the slightest, though. I mean, I don't touch your stuff, so and then you left me alone for six months. So yeah. And it's been some, some six months, hasn't it? That's a long time for things to stay so familiar. I didn't know when you might return. I wanted everything to be as you left it. But it has been six some, been some six months, it's true. It's... is your father... So is your father all right, Susie? What happened? My father? 
Yes, Professor Mikotoba. I mean, it was half a year ago, but that's why you went back to Japan. Because of the telegram you received saying he'd fallen ill with a very high fever for some unknown reason. That's right. So, I was surprised to learn you'd be coming back so soon. Surprised, but happy. I think I wrote about it in my letter to you. That it was all a trick. My father is fine is in fine health and I'm obviously very uh, relieved about that. Well, we're all delighted to have you back. It was quite by, a by accident that I've been able to return to Europe, actually. It's because of a very grand conference called the International Forensic Science Symposium. The International Forensic... That's the same sim symposium Lord Strongheart mentioned. Anyway, I've arrived safe and sound, and all that matters is that I'm here now. After all, I haven't yet fulfilled my promise to you, Iris. Oh! You must tell us everything that happened while you were back in Japan. Yes, of course. I shall. And then you tell how you dressed up as my... Self? I don't know. some Something like that. Related to me. And there's one other thing. Something you wrote in your letter that particularly grabbed my attention. About you-know-who. About Kazuma. I know. I'll tell you all that I can. Present my armband! I'm just kidding. Holy options, Batman. I realized my camera was not fully facing me. There we go. When I first arrived in Japan, I really thought I'd never be allowed to return to Britain. But curiously, after that awful trial at the Supreme Court, Father's mood changed entirely. The awful trial? Oh, yes. For the murder of Jezebel Brett. Jezebel. Not Jezebel. Jezebel Brett. Oh, oh, you dressed like a man then, didn't you, Susie? Oh, well, yes. Since women are forbidden in the courtroom, I had no choice. Wow, amazing. I wish I'd seen it, don't you, Runo? Um, yes, I suppose so. I want to play... Uh, I want to play at the being... Ah, uh, uh, at being a lawyer now. I could wear a false mustache. Maybe. Musta mustache. I don't know if it's mustache or mustache she would be saying. I don't think any mustache will hide the fact that you're just 10 years old, Iris. Uh, there are cho children who became lawyers. Uh, Von Miss Von... Francisca Von Karma got at a really young age. Not exactly 10, but still. Wait, does that violate child labor laws? Depends. I mean, this was back in the early, like, 1900 kind of thing. So... I don't think there's much child labor laws per se. And obviously some people, some children can be worked within reason. Questionable. I don't know, Justin, or future Justin, whichever Justin is present right now, uh, can attest to that or answer it. I don't know, we do research. That's a Justin problem, basically. There's something else I've been wanting to ask you, Mr. Sato. It's about the real reason why Professor Mikotoba summoned you back to Japan. You said in your letter it was something to do with that convict's loot we found in Mr. Natsumi's lodgings. That's right. A very large dog collar we found with the B emblem on it. It seems Mr. Natsume included a drawing of the, the collar in the report he submitted about this his time in Britain. I understand that when father saw the report, he turned as white as a sheet. Why would that be then? Father came to Britain himself, of course, to study. It was some time ago now, but he stayed for six years. I can only imagine that something must have happened during that time. 
But if he refuses to tell me what it was, then I intend to find the answers for myself. And I've decided that I, for one, won't be cape won't keep any more secrets. Oh, Susie. That's a very meaningful look Susato-san's giving Iris there. Lord Strongheart mentioned something about that symposium, too. I think he said that the investigative authorities from 40 different countries would attend. Yes, and from Japan, my father and judge... Jigo... G Jigoku... Jigoku? Jigoku. It's Goku! ...have been invited. It's something of an honor, I believe. Well, Professor Mikotoba is the lead... ...leading expert in forensic medicine in our country, after all. But who's the other person you mentioned? A judge, did you say? Yes. His Excellency, Judge Seishiro Jigoku. You've met him, Mr. Naruto. Last year, in the Supreme Court? You can't possibly have forgotten. That terrible trial of yours when you were accused of murder. Ah, yes. I try to, th to think of that as a positive turning point in my life these days. Right, he and Mikotobo knew each other. That was like hinted at the beginning of that game. Well, it, it was Judge J Jigoku who, was pre who presided over that trial. Jigoku. Jigoku. If I'm perfectly honest, I'd be happy to never see that man's face again in my life. Oh, well, anyway, as father was invited to the symposium, he agreed to return me returning to Britain too. He won't actually ar arrive until next month, so, but... Well, I couldn't wait. So I pleaded with him, and in the end, he agreed to, to me going on ahead. Yes, but about the symposium... It seems as though Lord Strongheart has put an, in an awful lot of work to make it happen. It's obviously very important. I believe it is. As I understand it, Lord Strongheart organized the entire event himself. I think he's hoping that by achieving exceptional results, he'll get the job of Attorney General. the most senior position in the British justice system. He's hoping to use his power to create the world's finest policing institution. That's what Father said anyway. Apparently, it's Lord Strongheart's lifelong ambition. Does Professor Mikotoba know Lord Strongheart personally then? I wonder. Actually, Lord Strongheart gave me a long speech about, about this very subject only yesterday. But I sort of lost the will to live live early on and didn't really listen to much of it. How trying for you. Live or was it leave or live? I can't tell. Giselle Brett. Giselle Brett, the woman whose unforgivable actions ended in me being wrongly accused of a crime I didn't commit. The murder of Dr. John H. Wilson. Yes, Giselle Brett. That's a name I won't forget for as long as I live. The extraordinary thing is, though, it seems it's a name we should all forget. Sorry? Since the incident, our government's intelligence services have been investigating Miss Brett. But it turns out that an English woman by the name of Giselle Brett didn't actually exist. Didn't exist? But how can that be? It was a pseudonym. Her real name was Shin. And she wasn't a visiting student either. That was a front. A front? Who? Who on earth was she then? Miss A. Shin. Her name is literally all our intelligence service have been able to ascertain about her. Nobody knows why or even how she came to be in Japan. 
it's a complete mystery. But that, but that makes no sense. It's no easy task to be accepted as a foreign student anywhere. What could that the woman have been up to? I'm afraid I really don't know. The only thing we can be sure of is that she had some business in our country that we yet don't yet understand. And now she's been killed. While all the questions surrounding her existence remain unanswered. Is it a mystery or is it a murder on my train? Both. Uh, we have a... Uh, what was this case again? Uh, this case has a murder of something. Oh, right, 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 right. At the beginning, it was basically, um, a financer died and so there was a murder so we're just trying to investigate the portion of how he got murdered and there's mysteries as in like why are certain things being set up the way they are like currently we are talking about a woman who framed the main character that we we're playing for murder and then she got called out for being a murderer and then she got murdered in this game and then we're finding out that she wasn't the actual person that we thought her title her Imagery is not real. Oh, I don't know the reference. Is that is that a Haddon time? I've never I've never played it. I know the game. I have yet to play it. I don't have it. I mean, if you want me to play it, Skull, all you have to do is uh, buy me the game. <laughs> Twenty points to James. Is he in Gryffindor, or Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, or Slytherin? James, what are you in? He's a Hufflepuff. Are you a Hufflepuff person? No. Slytherin. Why would you say I'm not evil? You, you're sly. Slytherin is for for house bad guy. Well, that, that Sly Slytherin in the actual general term is meant for people who are very cunning, who is very like quick thinking, who kind of think the ways out of things, kind of like a snake. They're not, they're usually housed bad guys because unfortunately JK Rowling is super biased. But in reality, they're just very cunning. Gryffindor is very courageous. A Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw are basically just kind of there for Miss yeah. this game. Yeah, pretty much. Ravenclaw is very for smart people. Hufflepuff is... I forget what was the general term for Hufflepuff. Oh, is it cunning? I thought loyal was Gryffindor. Like, I, I, the Hufflepuffs. I, I just know that Ravenclaw is more for smart people and Gryffindor is more for courageous leaders. Roomba was the best part of the game. I mean, Roomba was in one shot, which Skull, you should totally try one shot. It's now available on oh, the wait, I think Gryffindor is like bravery. Yeah, it's like courage and but their leadership, though. Yeah, and then Hufflepuff. It says Hufflepuff means being loyal, dedicated, and honest. Or according to this post. Okay, if they're honest. I mean, you have to take the Pottermore quiz. I took the Pottermore quiz, and apparently I'm Gryffindor. I did take it. Uh, is she the only... Is this going to get... Um, the only thing we know, we for sure, is that she had some business in our country, and we don't yet understand. And now that she's been killed, while all the answers surrounding her existence remain unanswered, I'm afraid so. Ah, Shin. Who on earth was she? And why do I feel as though I've heard that name before somewhere? Ah, I was at the end. Ah. Naruhodo ne. Doink, 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 doink.
Yeah, I was like, there were um, reconfirming that. Yeah, it was the at the end of the first game, the four they were listed four people: K Asoji, A Shin, T Gregson, which is Gregson, and then J Wilson, which was the guy who was murdered in the first case of the first game. So only one of those people is alive now. So Gregson is the only one who may know anything. Uh, brave and courageous is Gryffindor. Hufflepuff is honest, dedicated. Okay, Ravenclaw is smart and so or sense something and cunning and loyal. Ravenclaw is intelligence and diligence. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember when the first time I pl uh, took the quiz. I was either Hufflepuff or Ravenclaw. I don't remember. But uh, apparently now that I took the Prodermore, it's I am Gryffindor. At least I'm not slow to run. <laughs> after, after my friend Ray's trial, the reporter who actually killed Miss Brett said something very strange. I know! I don't even remember what name I gave you. I know the truth! I know you had a hand in what went on! In the visiting students' fate. Nobody here in Japan knows anything about it! They don't know the guy who never made it to e They don't know that the guy never made it to England, that he died on that steamship, and that he'll never. Obviously, I couldn't ask him to elaborate at the time. But later, I visited the man in prison cell and asked for him what he was going to say about Kazuma-sama. And what did you learn? After he died on the voyage the to the Great Britain, his body should have been unladen at the port of Hong Kong and passed into the care of the consulate staff there. Should have been? Well, it turns out that his body never arrived. It's just... disappeared. What? Kazuma's body vanished? Our government tried to cover the fact up, it seems. They erected a grave on the cliffs by our hometown. Except... Kazuma Samas isn't there. Did, did Professor Mikotoba know about this? Yes, it would seem that he did. But he didn't tell me. They, they're still investigating what happened to Kazuma's body as, Sama's body as we speak. I, I just don't believe it. And what is this acute feeling of apprehension I have all of a sudden? First time I took it was Hufflepuff, and the Paramore gave me Slytherin. Yeah, I, w I I don't remember. I don't even have it saved anywhere. I don't think which one I had, Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff. I feel like I was Ravenclaw when I first took it, and the qu the quiz was way longer, a lot more questions. But hey. I still need to beat Hogwarts Legacy. That's one thing I, I still need to go back and play more. Thinking back now, some of the things that happened on the Estes Buria were definitely strange. I have to beat it. I mean, I've been playing like a various different games, so it's on my list. I think right now, because on my PS5, I'm trying to set a list of what games I want to play. I have it currently set as trying to beat Sandland and a game called Outbound Ghost. The not the new one coming out, but the original one that was very controversial for a lot of things. Um, that one I have. I'm playing with Emoto, and we're just gonna do it. I I, I barely play Hogwarts, like so. I need like nothing strange. It had Sherlock Holmes, the most normal person in history ever. I don't know. I don't think. Uh, I don't think you're normal. I mean, after he died, uh, we never saw his body again, did we? Could it be? Could it be that he's actually still alive? Stop it, Mr. Naruto. It's too much to bear. Sorry, I didn't mean to. 
Just thinking about the possibility pains me so very much. It pains you. Kazuma is his best friend, Naruhodo's best friend. I feel like he, Naruhodo has a much more personal stake in this than you do. I'm just saying. Thanks, you too. Aww, Justin loves me. Cast your mind back for a moment, Mr. Naruhodo. When Kazuma-sama was discovered, Mr. Sholmes was there, wasn't he? And he definitely examined the body. I remember it clearly. Ah, you're you're right. So if Cosmo hadn't actually been dead at all, it would mean that Mr. Shom had lied to us. But there's no reason why he would possibly have done such a thing. I suppose that's true, yes. The idea that he might still be alive somewhere. It wants me to fill with, me with hope, but I can't let it, because it if it turned out not to be true, then I'd be back at the bottom of the awful pit of despair again. Again, uh, Naruhodo had, ha, has it much worse. I'm, I'm terrified of what that might do to me. Beat the story and just hit the three frost to fully finish. Oh, okay. Well, I have yet to beat the story, so I need to get through that. Justin, do you believe that Kazuma-sama is alive? That doesn't sound like someone important. No, it doesn't. Nah, it couldn't be. Oh, are you saying you're, you're a non-believer? You're not like one of those people that believes in people coming back to life when they don't find a body? You're not like an anime believer? Are you saying Herlock Sholmes is a liar? I'm not saying he's a truther. I, I'm glad you went there <laughs> <laughs> uh, you did not disappoint me <laughs> uh at least I'm, I, I'm glad you at least set up for that <laughs> uh but i'm off to sleep no worries skull have a good night's sleep you rest well thank you for at least dropping by and saying hi good luck with everything and i'll catch you later for sure have a good night by the way, Justin, are you working on Monday? Actually, I'm curious if uh, you're also working on Monday. Uh, oh, Veterans Day? Uh, yeah. No, I'm off. Oh, because like, I, I'm, I, I thought Veterans Day, a lot of people will have it off, but apparently not many people have it off. So, I mean, I guess I'm one of the unique people. <laughs> I don't believe it. Well, 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 uh, believe what you don't want to believe. That's what I say. Uh, let's see. Oh, Miss Sasato. I know she's giving the idea the thought it deserves. It's Miss it's Susato's we're talking about, after all. So I'll probably shouldn't push it for now. Oh, by the way, Justin, I wanted to make a quick comment about uh, Jamboree. About the board yeah. we played, but af after we go through these dialogues. <laughs> you, you'd never believe it? Uh, Will, you never believe in anything. Will, Will must hate Naruto. <laughs> to be honest, the Believe It was quickly dropped for you know after like, I think the first, uh, at, when Shippuden hit. Because, yeah. 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 I mean, I kind of wish they kept Believe It because it just feels like, like, here's the thing. I'm, uh... On a quick note on anime, I kind of wish some anime dubbings had some creative freedom like they did back in the day. Like, changes it up just a bit. Because sometimes I, I like I get it, they want to be authentic, but at the same time, I kind of feel like the creative like writing was sometimes funny. And I wish some uh, animes retained some of the old classic uh, stuff they said just because it's like, this is what the American or like English people in the U.S uh grew up with at least kind of like how in dragon ball z they kept some of the move names the way they are even though they could easily change it to something else so i don't know that's just my thing i believe that my lower back hurts that's what i believe i don't believe you oh um so in terms of what what i was saying about the uh, board justin um, 
I realized that actually when I was looking at Mario uh, Rainbow's Castle, I actually, that's a board that's probably really good for a Jamboree buddy because it forces players to go through in the same direction as many other players with a Jamboree buddy. So it, it, for, yeah. it does a lot of changing. So I say, I think that might be one of the better boards for Jamboree buddies because of the amount of changes that keeps going on. It's almost like the developers were like, hey, we should really make it so that Jamboree Buddies are good. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, my battery is low. All the other situations where they're not so good. <laughs> yeah. Also, I was looking at Proton John, as Kyle mentioned before, when he was playing Jamboree. Uh, apparently, they had like twice, more than twice the stars we collectively collected in that entire game. So either we were playing really poorly or we were fighting each other for too long or we were moving not that much compared to what uh, what I originally thought. Did they only do 15 turns? Yep. Oh, that's awkward. <laughs> I was going to say, it was like, um, are, are, are we just that bad? <laughs> yeah. Uh, check the tea. Let's see, present. So I converse with everything. About this paper, Mr. Sato. Yes, it's about the Great Exhibition. I've been dreaming about it, you know? I was sorry that you were going to miss- Oh, right, so there's only talk about the front. Oh, by the way, Justin, uh, do you know about the DLC for this, uh, for the Great Ace Attorneys? Uh, no? Okay, so I learned about this, uh, quite recently. Um, and it's actually quite unfortunate. So apparently they were DLC for at least the second game uh, on the 3DS, but obviously they were only Japanese only. And according to what I read, they apparently never added the DLCs to this game. Oh, sucks. But the caveat is if you got this game on Steam, there is already people working on fan translations to put it onto the Steam version. So, if you ever want to, like, watch it or, like, get it yourself, there's that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And apparently, uh, you don't get to play Naruhodo in both of those DLCs. Uh, I don't know if you want me to, uh, want me to tell you or not. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up myself then. Uh-huh. I didn't look up too much about it. I just know what characters you can play. Seems like it's borderline spoiler material, so maybe wait till later. I, it, uh, yeah, I'm very, I'm very sure it's probably gonna have spoilers in it. Um, I just know what characters they were, so it's like there has to be reasons for it. So we'll see about it. I don't, I don't know the plot for either one, is what I saw. Mm. So all, obviously, the playing the characters have almost little to no impact to me. <laughs> Uh, I guess I might have to just examine things for now. Avoid the freezing winter air is a matter of life or death, too, if you ask me. Uh, I mean, Japan can have really cold... Really cold stuff, I'm just saying. I have a shovel here. 
that um that it helps bury the bodies. Don't worry. Tsusato says it's not a it's a spade, not a shovel. Don't yeah. Don't you carry spades regularly, Justin? Don't you have a spade in your room right now? Justin's not answering because he's trying to hide the fact that he has not just one spade, but two spades. I'm, I'm spaded out. See, Justin's doing illegal activity. Didn't you know that by international laws, you can only have one spade in your household at a time? I, I didn't sign up for uh, spade laws weekly. Well, you should. They're very interesting. Did you know that uh, people get killed by spades on a yearly basis? I thought you were going to say people die when they're killed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, I did know that. I did I did remember to, to uh, brush up on my uh, isekai trivia. Yeah, because people die who die to spades automatically get isekai You just don't know what isekai world you go for. You can be a very OP person or be, uh, or uh, turn into a vending machine. But you get loved by women. That is a anime that is ac that's an actual anime, by the way, I'm referencing for those who actually don't know. The amount of isekais that happened over the past year, I'm actually kind of shocked. People figured out people love them. Yeah, I was just like, oh, there was one this isekai. It's like, oh, that's cool. And then next month, we'll be like, here's another isekai. Uh, okay. And Oh, wait, now there's three of them. And then, and then there's another isekai. Next month, there's two months because had two isekais. I'm just like, what happened? What, what, is there like an isekai convention all of a sudden? <laughs> Are they trying to out isekai one another? That's literally it. Ah, uh, I have to pick little old Iris. She's old. She's 10 years old and she's old. <laughs> it must be a year ago now. I wrote a really long story based on some of my father's old notes. It's about one of Hurley's greatest exploits. I call it the Hound of the Baskervilles. But then Mr. Sholmes forbade you from, from publishing it and put the manuscript somewhere nobody could get their hands on it. So nobody knows anything about it apart from Hurley and I. But for some reason, you knew the title of it, didn't you, Susie? Oh, I, it sounds so exciting, the Hound of Baskervilles. I should, I should, I should, I should, I should, I should love to, what? What? Uh... Oh, it sounds ex so exciting. The Hound of the Baskervilles. I should love to read it. Am I reading that right? It's British. Is I don't think British is broken English, though. And it also, they I said... I should love to read it. It's very much a UK thing. Okay. And I, I know that they said live. But, they, but they're not even British. They're Japanese. Well, they've been living there for a while. But that was early on when she said it. What counts? No, it doesn't. <laughs> and you wouldn't tell me how you come to know it. Yes, but I made you a promise that I would explain one day, didn't I? I think it's time. Oh. I'm only sorry I had to keep... Ah, you're turning to Iris. 
I'm only sorry that I had to keep I've had to keep it for, from you for so long, Iris. That's true. Technically, she could have said it, but then at the end of the first game, which was not that long after, because it was like only a couple weeks, she left for six months. So it's been six months. She didn't really have an opportunity to say it again. I will say. Let's see. It was completely by accident that I came to know the title of your manuscript, Iris. It was a short while before I we left Japan. I was cleaning my cleaning father's study and I saw something on his writing desk. A large box of papers. There was a label affixed to the box that was written in their English. It read The Hound of the Baskervilles. What? A Baskerville story? Of course, I had no idea what it was at the time, but father came in and... Sato! What are you doing? Oh, f father? Did you look at those papers? No, I, I simply read the label, that's all. Well, put it out of your mind. Sorry? Forget that you ever saw it and certainly don't tell anybody else about this. Well, too late. That aged really well. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, that aged really poorly. Do you understand? Well, she didn't tell anyone for six months, so... Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, she told someone early in the game, which I don't know how long it's been between that one to when they first met Iris. So, you know. Eh. But then again, yeah. Her Herlock Sholmes could have uh, tattletailed on her. Because I think he was in the room. You know. Because he's a tattletale. Mm. But what was Iris's manuscript doing in Japan? I have no idea. But when I heard Iris mention the word Baskerville that day, the title just slipped out. I would never have guessed that it was an unpublished account of one of Mr. Sholm's exploits. When I returned to Japan, I asked father to explain, but he refused to answer any of my questions, and there was no sign of the big box in his office. That's really all I know about it. I have no doubt that father was a, ha, has a very good reason for being so secretive about it, but still. I made up my mind to explain myself to both of you. Well... Thank you for being so honest, Susie. So, Mr. Naruto, I'm ready to start investigating if you are. I've committed every detail about the... I've committed every detail about the case to memory. Are you a machine? And Iris has told me about the disturbing happenings at the Waxwork Museum as well. So, you're fully abreast of the situation already, Mr. Sato. I'd expect nothing less, to be honest. Abreast? Hmm. Yeah. Alright. I would think our first port of call should be to investigate this Mr. Drepper. The engineer responsible for building the elaborate machine that was used to affect to affect this extraordinary trick. Yes. A conjurer of sorts, by the sound of it. Well known to in the fields of science and magic. We need to go and arrest him! Well, yes. We, he must know the truth behind this case. So, I agree we really do need to find the man. Hmm... It sounds like it's a case of tracking someone down. Which is the job for the police, or a great detective. Are we supposed to guess who she might be thinking of? We don't have much time, so we need to start get started straight away, I think. Good idea. Well, best of luck then. Oh, you're not coming today? I'm 
going to Brixton Road shortly for the herb market. But let me know later how you got on, won't you? That was a little abrupt. The pull of the herb market must be strong. Hey, have you ever cooked and dealt with herbs? They can be. New location has been added. Ooh, I can go to Lord Armstrong's office. Uh, let me go to the prison. I want to hear hair brains. Ah, E equals MC squared. I don't see that anywhere. Dang it. <laughs> I was hoping that was there and I was going to call him out. It's like, that's not science. That, that has not been invented yet. Has it not been invented yet? When does E equals MC squared? I'm actually curious about this one. E equals MC squared. Uh, made. All right. Created, I should say. Formula equation in 1905. Oh, so it actually could have been depending on when this day and age takes place. It's early 1900s. What is he doing? He's, oh my, the whole wall of, of the cell is covered with mathematical equations and he's still writing more now. Um, professor, sorry to interrupt. Interrupt. Oh, ha. Ah. It's not a hold And who is this young lady? My name is Susato Mikotoba. I'm Mr. Narhodo's judicial assistant. It's a pleasure to meet you, Professor. <gasps> oh, if only, if only I'd met a refined young woman like you sooner. <laughs> None of this would have happened. No. No, that's not logical. That makes no sense at all. Oh, oh dear. I'm, I'm sorry for if my presence here upsets you. I owe you an apology too, Professor. I didn't mean... I didn't manage to deliver what I promised you I would in this court this morning. Oh, no. No, 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 no. The whole thing, the whole miserable affair all happened because I've been such a complete and utter clot. Um, Professor Hairbrain? All right, let me look at this, some of this. Uh, oh, quadratic equations. Well, that's actually some math stuff I can actually recognize. Uh, Good old Pythagorean theorem, right? Uh, derivatives. They're derivatives. Uh. Oh, I meant like the angles. Oh yeah, the ang uh, yeah the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. Uh, ABCs. Uh, yeah, there's some there. Uh, the quad I want to say quadratic. No, it, it's derivatives I'm seeing. I don't see any integrals, though, but I do see derivatives. Uh, there are actually some math equations here, so I I'll give kudos and then just write scribbles on the board. Um, Have you been working on in, in your cell? Oh, haha. <laughs> uh, you mean, um... You mean that? Oh dear, how embarrassing. I, I was suddenly struck with by an idea and I simply had to write it down. The wall was all I had in hand. Oh, is it some new hypothesis? Some... I can't... I'm changing all over. Uh, something to surpass your super high voltage instantaneous kinesis maybe? Ah, no, actually, this is my autobiography. In math equations? Your autobiography? Autobiography? Blah, 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 blah. Autobiography. <laughs> yes. I don't know why I couldn't say that word. Autobiography. You're good. Um, how I was diddled and fiddled by Albert Heilbrain. Whoa there. That could be taken out of context in so many different ways. You know that, right? I found that I could represent my art fortunes with only odd numbers in an ambitious set of sim simu simu simultaneous equations. Simultaneous equations, blah. Really? 
I'm going to have to pay back all the loans I took for the Kinesis machine, you see. So it's going to be a new serial part publication from the from next month. Part 1 on odd birth and an odd upbringing. You can't beat the man's optimism, that's for sure. I see. Well, for now, would you mind if we talk a little more about the case? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, of course. I've been working through the numbers. I was diddled. I was fiddled by the pair of them. Oh. Oh, we're going to need some help with Mario because he knows how to handle with balls. By Asmin and that aloof engineer, Drebber. We're not going to have to sit through an explanation of all these equations, are we? I mean, would you rather hear about how it was diddled and fiddled? Uh, that might be an all-nighter thing. Yeah. Are you ready to stay up for eight hours, Justin? Not if I have to hear that. Uh, well, too bad. You're stuck here, so we have to listen to him for eight hours straight. Oh, no. So, uh, I hope you're ready for not sleeping and not playing Metaphor the rest of the day. <laughs> Good thing it's nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything I believed in has been turned on its head. My research, Mr. Asman, the Kinesis machine, my hypothesis even. I'm sorry it has come to this. There's really no other way. No, it's not your fault. I wanted to protect my work, but in the end, there was nothing worth protecting. I mean, here's the thing. Technically speaking, his hypothesis is still a hypothesis. And if the machine was designed to trick people, then it wasn't really going to show off anything of his hypothesis per se. But I know that his hypothesis, what he submitted, is still can, can be revealed. It just, it's still a theory because it hasn't been proven yet, is all. Properly, at least. I was ne it was never my intention to deceive anyone. I didn't want to trick the public. No, of course you didn't. But in the court this morning, I realized something. Oh? If you had, if you'd done something wrong without knowing it, You've still done something wrong logically. It makes no difference if you were aware of it or not. I mean, logically, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's not wrong in there. Yeah. Ignorance is a poor excuse. The blame still lies with me. Eh, at least he's accepting that logic. I could get I can get by that. Oh, professor. He believed in me this morning, you know. Barack did. He believed in my hypothesis. Well, I think that was just a necessary factor in the prosecution's establishing this, its case. No, no, Barack wouldn't do something like that. I'm sure he genuinely believed it. Did he? I mean, he knows him more than Naruto, though. Also, again, as I said, your theory is still a theory. And if the machine is truly just a magic trick, not proving your theory, then in a sense, your theory hasn't been disproven. It's just been like not proven that's all it that's all it is i think i understand now why it was that he decided to take on the prosecution in my trial i mean after the terrible accident happened nobody would believe in my hypothesis anymore not the police not the prosecution service not any lawyers even i feel like i dealt some kind of fishing ah fishing Blah! <laughs> yes, we're f dealing with fishes. Justin, uh, get get out the tuna. We're dealing with fishes. What does it have to be tuna? Yes. Oh. I I don't dang. care. I do not care about your um complaints. Get out the tuna. Oh. But tuna aren't in season. I don't care. Go into the ocean, find a tuna, and grab it. That sounds like a lot of work. Well, too bad. I'm telling you anyway. I think I'd rather hear about him getting diddled and fiddled all night. <laughs> so that's the only reason that that's the only time you'll be like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll stick through your eight hour lecture. <laughs> Get me out of this pain. 
feel like I dealt some kind of fish finishing blow here. So, if there are... Uh, let's see. So, if there are any other prosecutors to take, take the case, if it was anyone other than Baroque, I'm sure the prosecution would have declared my hypothesis a complete and utter nonsense. And in that case, you would have been declared a fraud yourself, Professor. Exactly, which would have been a fate worse than death for me. Which, technically speaking, again, we have only, haven't disproven his theory. We just haven't disproved. We disprove his invention. But Baruch insisted that I was a proper man of science from the start to finish. You think that he, that's why he? I know him very well indeed. He's an extremely kind-hearted soul. But that extremely kind-hearted soul spent all morning trying to paint you as a murderer, didn't he? Well, admittedly, that part of the analysis appears to have some flaws in it. I mean, again, it's one of those things that it's hard to say, and he's a prosecutor. He's meant to prosecute you as a murderer, so... And what about the whole Reaper side of things? How does that fit into the whole kind-hearted soul idea? Do, do you think he said... How the trick from trick to trick me from the very start? I'm sorry to say, but that does seem likely, yes. When I first met him, he introduced himself as a wealthy financer. He looked over the paper I'd written and said my work would benefit all humanity and must be pursued. Which, if it was true, it would be. But I think we already had a discussion like last week being like, we don't want to have our atoms changed to get from one place to another. I don't even think, Justin, you agreed with that, too. Sorry, what? I, I, I was saying, like, uh, last week, we had that discussion of, like, we didn't want our atoms to be, like, changed or switched up to just go from one place to another. Oh, yeah. I think, James, you would be agreeing that, too, where you were, like, in order to teleport, you have to be de-animized and then reconstructed in another location. All right? Wait, what? So if if there was an actual teleporter where in order for it to be to work, uh, you would need to be like deconstructed, like all by atom by atom, and your atoms have to be sent over to a new location and then reconstructed there. Uh, you wouldn't be comfortable with that, right? Mm. Well, it's part of the sci-fi they do. Like there is a trope of like, you know, yeah, there is. Philosophically, are you still the same person? Yeah. But would you feel comfortable in doing a transportation like that if it was available in, like, now? Uh, like, does it work? It, <laughs> theoretically, it, like, it, it supposedly works, and it has worked, like, kind of thing, but, uh, would you still do it? Uh, it's a weird metaphysical question. Yeah, I'm just asking the questions here, James. You're supposed to answer yes or no. Probably not. Mm -hmm. See, all of us agree. Uh, no he, coercion whatsoever. Legally speaking, you're dead, right? In a sense, yeah. He was so... He was so enthused. He was so empathetic. But in reality, he was a mastermind of some vast criminal network, it seems. I, I still can't believe it. As the machine was essentially a set decoration for some stage magic. It probably did, didn't require a large amount of investment, actually. But the scale of it, it wasn't just some small trick. It was a very elaborate feat of deception. All the young scientists are full of hope about their bur burgeoning ideas. Full of zeal. What the heck is zeal? But none of us have any money. We want to do research, but we can't afford it. Many of us take on barely legal part-time work to try to earn just a measly few pennies, a few measly pennies to carry on. To go through all that, only to be taken for a complete fool. It's too rotten to believe. It is, I agree. But that's why we have to find those responsible and bring them to justice. 
Mr. Asman is no more, of course, which leaves only the engineer. Mr. Enoch Dreber. Is he an engineer or a magician or a swindler? It, it was about a year ago when Mr. Asman brought Dreber to meet me at my laboratory. Since then, I've met him many times to discuss details about the kinesis machine. Uh, but at no point did you have... Wait, wait, I'm reading it as a wrong person. But at no point did you have any inkling that he was just an illusionist? Oh, he was def... Oh, he definitely wasn't just an illusionist. What do you mean? He was a wealth of deep scientific knowledge. He... There's no question that that man's a genuine scientist. It's instantly apparent in the conversation. In conversation. I see. But the wretched man deceived you, Professor. It's unforgivable. We must do everything we can to find him and bring him to justice. Are there no clues you can give us as to his whereabouts? Sorry, we only ever discussed the kinesis machine. Nothing else. Hmm. Although, just once. I did visit him, visit his workshop. What workshop? Jeffers' enormous fabrication laboratory where he constructed my great machine. Why? Why didn't you mention this before? Enoch Jeffers' workshop. There's every chance we might find a man there. Of course, they have to make it like a suspenseful thing. So you've been to Dreber's place of work then? Yes, just once you understand. It, it was an enormous place, plenty of room to construct a kinesis machine, you see. Wh where can we find it? We have to go there at once. Uh, there's a good chance that we'll find Dreber there. Well, yes, definitely. I'm sure. As in, I'm sure you're not gonna, you're not going to want to hear this. What? I absolutely have no idea where the workshop is at all. I'm so sorry. I was more than half expecting that. You see, I was blindfolded in the carriage the entire way there. He blindfolded you? He wasn't taking any chances then. The place was incredible. The pinnacle of modern engineering. Even the oil he used was the very best. A special French machine oil that's impossible to obtain in Britain. Ah, the indescribable, indescribable scent of imported of that imported oil. Perfumes across the world shouldn't forget their scent formulae and use that instead. What is this, Investigations? If Justin was here, he would get that reference. A little bit. What do you think, Miss Susato? You the machine for your next birthday? <laughs> I've never used any kind of perfume, Mr. Naruto. I'm not sure I'd like to start with that. I don't suppose you know even part of the workshop's address, uh, Professor? You don't have a business card from Drepper, for example. The man was clearly very cautious, Mr. Zato. Sure. I'm sure he would ne never have... <gasps> Aha! Oh, yes, I do. He gave me his business card once. It's here. Right here. Look. What? Let me see it. Let me see that. Throw etiquette to the wind. Why don't you? Enoch Drepper, engineer. I'm afraid that's all it says. It's no address. No. I don't know. Can't say I'm surprised. Still, this could be useful.
I was half expecting it to, um, you know, have, like, licking it for some reason. I have no idea why. She's getting attacked by a dog. I have no idea there are so many people in the world. I know what you mean. I'm packed here today. It feels as though it's taking us two hours just to make our way through the crowds at this point. Has it? I shut my brain down so I didn't, I didn't really notice, to be honest. Of course. I do wish I had the absent mind of mind sometimes, Mr. Arodo. There you are. I had a feeling you lot would show your mugs before long. Oh, wait. Wrong person. There, oh, yeah. <clears throat> there you are. I had a feeling you lot would sh show your mugs before long. <laughs> Gregson, when did you have a, such a feminine voice? Oh, Inspector Gregson, I see you're working. You're hard at work as usual. Warm greetings to you. I do hope you've been keeping well since we last met. Since last we met. What's with all the ceremony? We just saw each other in court this morning. Not you, Sunshine. The gentle wom gentlewoman so loyally at your side. Oh. Well, thank you, Inspector. How good of you to know this. He might be a bit rough around the edges, but he's still a proper English gentleman at heart, I suppose. As you're probably, pro you've probably guessed, we are hoping to investigate the scene some more. Right, well, that's the young trainee's domain. Oi! Get over here, Gina! She seems to be busy playing with the puppy. Probably giving it a traditional East End training. Gina? She's a police officer now? Amazing, isn't it? She's a good kid, actually. Heart's in the right place, anyway. She's got the detection bug, if you ask me. Yep. I think she'll follow in my footsteps nicely. What do you mean? Oh, he's retiring soon. I'm being transferred. It's time for me to s say toodle do toodle 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 oo. It's time for me to say toodle to London. Oh, no, really? That's that's a bit sudden, isn't it? I had no idea. What are you going to be posted then? I almost went Scottish there. We're we'll come to see how you're getting along. Ha, huh, not likely. But you're welcome to try. If you don't mind the trip to France, that is. To France? I'll be working it in the Poli Paris Police Prefecture, the Chipper Peas, if you're my, if you're, if you're willing to say that, the PPPs. Should be right up my alley. But, but, France, it's an entirely different country. I don't understand. Why would you be sent there? That's the way adult world works, sunshine. Now don't go poking your nose in where it's not wanted. I'm intending to take the kid with me when I go. What? You're taking Gina to Paris? Well, I can't leave her in, Lon her in London. Who knows what will become of her? I suppose he's worried she slipped back into her slipping, into slipping her hands into people's pockets and purses. I don't think he's worried about her pickpocketing now, Rodo. I think he's worried about the Reaper. Oh, of course. So that's playing on Inspector Gregson's mind too, is it? is it? Anyway, I haven't mentioned any of this to Gina, so don't go blabbing your here, me. No, no, of course not. I've got, I gotta keep the diving diva safe and sound until all this is over, at least. Oi! Did you call me a bloomin' di diving diva again? Huh, so you heard that, did ya? Well, any questions about the scene you can put him 
to my capable detective devil here. All right, you heard the boss. Inspector Rostrad's in charge here now. I suppose I'd better keep my word and not mention anything about Paris. So, um, Gina, you've got a new dog, have you? Isn't he great? Toby's the name. His name? Oh, how delightful. He's absolutely adorable. Yes, the dog does seem lovely. But it's the not-so-lovely Inspector Gregson that's playing on my mind, to be honest. Uh, Gina, we were actually hoping that we could investigate the scene again. Yeah, alright. If it around here, you can do what you like. Oh, that's alright, is it? I'm gonna be playing with my new friend here. Ah, yes, Toby. The machine that exploded must be at the top of those stairs, I presume. I haven't actually seen it yet, so if you don't mind... Sorry, you can't go up there, Suze. Oh? It's like I told Odo yesterday. Even I ain't, al I ain't allowed near that wreck. What's it called again? The reason we ain't supposed to touch it? The special, it, the special, the special disposition for scientific equipment act. Is that what you're thinking of? You were thinking of? That's the one. That's the one. That's why only them lot are allowed to investigate it. What are they called again? The friend, the friend six something, the forensic investigation team. Is that what you're thinking of? That's the one. Yeah. But isn't that it? The case that the special dis dis dispensation has been lifted I think so I don't really get it to be truthful with you you're still supposed to get permission from someone bi some big wig or other as far as I know what was his name again um lone strain something I'm not sure that's quite right Gina I think you mean Lord Strongheart perhaps that's the one yeah Apparently, he's always watching the time of something. So, without Lord Strongheart's express permission, we can't investigate on the stage. It was great, weren't it? I had a, a light laugh. It was was a new one for me. On me. Wait, on me, that. Wait, I had a right laugh. It was a new one on me. New one on me, that. You know, being in court and and not spending the whole time worrying, worrying, I'm about to be found out. In court, not spending the whole time worrying, uh, I'm about to be found out. Okay, that's, that's what you mean. You did keep an awful lot of secrets in your in all of your previous court appearances, didn't you? Yeah, and all those made harder for me. Every single time and all. Just doing my job, Gina. But watching someone else get it in the neck is a lot of fun, actually. You're as amazing when you showed the dodgy professor's dodgy experiment was a total fix. The dodgy professor, as you put it, Gina, is Mr. Naruhodo's client. Yes, and I'm starting to wish he wasn't, though. It's the boss I fear for you. So I feel sorry for sent off to do the impossible. What do you mean? He is supposed to arrest the other cove, ain't he? And in time for to the tomorrow and all. You know, the dodgy engineer, what is his name again? Mr. Drebber, you mean? Enoch Drebber? That's the one, yeah. So the police are looking for this mysterious man with the black monocle. I guess they would be. He's putting in too much on the boss, if you ask me. If you ask me, he he says he it's giving him a gut ache. I mean, that might be the amount of fish and chips he's been eating. Oh dear, but I do wonder if that is that isn't actually from all the fried food. That's what I was, that's what I say, Susato. So Scotland Yards are trying to track down Mr. 
Enoch Drebber. I wonder if they're if they've had any luck. He's really funny looking. Got two eyes what don't match. Stole a glimpse of a picture of him earlier. I mean, I didn't actually pinch it or nothing. The old devil has got it. Sorry, who? You don't know. The scowling reaper what's always glugging down glasses. All oh, that oh, blood red plunk. Ah, Lord Von Seeks. He's always had it for me. For me, that cough. Don't know. Don't know what he's always scowling about, man. But probably would have been a pretty good boss as it goes. He'd rather be the Reaper's apprentice than a detective trainee. The way I see it, if the choice is between a chip guzzling detective and a chalice glugging demigod, you're equally bad badly off with both. I suppose you're right. I hadn't thought of it like that. Glad we've put that one to bed. Anyway, the point is, everyone at the yard's dead set on finding the fishy engineer. But there don't be, don't seem to be any clue, be no clues to go on, so they're stuck. There's nothing that can lead us to Drebber at all. Toby the dog. Where did you find that little mutt then, Gina? Oi! Don't be flaming rude, Odo! Slide overreaction, don't you think? He ain't no mutt, all right? Toby's all... How... How do you... Huh, how do they put it? Did they put... How did they put it? <clears throat> how did they put it? Yeah, I'm trying to fix that one. Oh, yeah. A bona fide detective. Sorry? I've given him a proper title and everything. It's Chief is Inspector Toby to you. More senior than Inspector Gregson. Is he... Bleh. I mean, depending on how old the dog is, could technically be older than Gregson. In dog years. Oh, so he's a police dog, is he? The police recruit... <gasps> the police recruit dogs now? I've heard... I've heard that they're... They're already p being used officially in German... Germany as part of this... Their city... Ah, why am I talking with Gina? I've heard that they're already being used officially in Germany as part of their city policing. They're used for chasing criminals and... Such like... They have a wonderful sense of smell, after all. I have a fairly good sense of smell myself, as it happens. I can tell undergarments that have that have been freshly laundered from under... Wait, what? I can tell undergarments that have been freshly laundered from undergarments that ha have them. That's pretty easy. Huh? That's nothing compared to this little old fella, Odo. Oh, really? According to the what ba the boss said, once Toby's here got a good riff of your drawers, he could chase the scent on to the other side of the wood of the wood of the wood. Ah, oh, let me read that again. He he could chase the scent to the other side of the world. What? T -t 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 to other side of the world? You mean he can swim? What's the matter, Hodo? I think you may have missed the point by a rather large, a rather, a rather wide, rather. I think you missed the point, the point by rather a wide margin. I just can't believe this little dog has such an incredible skill. I'm telling you, Odo, there's gonna be a more, be more and more dogs doing their bit for the police in the future. Yes, I, I agree. Right, one of these, one of these days, there'll be barking orders at us lot, or not the other way around. Oh dear, sorry Gina, I don't think I agree with your vision quite that much. Well, anyway, whoever you think about that Toby here is Britain's first police dog. I found him all down the old, the east end uh, the other day. Someone had just chucked him out of the sh on the street. There you go. I knew she lifted him from somewhere. Oh, Gina, you're such a kind-hearted soul, aren't you? To children and to animals. Okay. Well, there's a couple things I need to do. Yes, James? It's not 4 a.m. yet. 
Sorry. Yeah, it's true. All right. Have a good night, James. I don't think there's much I can do down here in terms of like investigating. Yeah, I don't think there's much I can do in terms of looking at anything because until I get Strongheart's permission. So there's three things I could do, I believe I could do right now, but I will save the third thing that I'm thinking of. Slightly different location. That's true. Yeah, he prayed all the time. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to save some of that stuff for later. Who are you? Oh, who's that standing beside Lord Strongheart? I wonder... I've never seen her before. Ah, why are you speaking British? I've never seen her before. Ah, the young champion of the court. You had some success this morning, I understand. And you've thrown the entire government into disarray as a result. Oh. Uh, you, you mean because of the Professor Harebrain's experiment? Sham McScience being the, traded at the London's Great Exhi Exhibition. The country's been made, of look to, made to look foolish, and now politicians are scrab uh, scrabbling to respond. Lord Von Zeeks is in Whitehall as we speak, given an emergency briefing. Oh dear, I um didn't mean to cause any trouble. None of this is your responsibility. The government is entirely to blame for having been taken in. Blame for having been taken in. The special dispensation that prevents investigation on the scene will be annulled later today. Once that happens, my forensic investigation team will move in and deal with that scrap metal in no time. It's scrap metal now. It's scrap metal now, is it? Until later then, Lord Strongheart. Yes, thank you. You seem to be a character that's prominent, unless you only show up that one time and never again. They will never do that, right, Justin? Right? Yeah, they will probably... That person will probably never show up again, because clearly they are not set up for... as a hint for a future thing. Um, who was that? That was Dr. Courtney Seath, Scotland Yard's uh, Scar Scotland Yard's esteemed chief coroner. She's leading the forensic investigation team's handling of this case. She was delving uh, She was delivering her report about the victim in fact. Oh, I see, about Mr. Asman. Following the outcome of the trial earlier, I asked the cor coroner's office to reevaluate its findings. I the outcome of the trial early. I asked the coroner. Okay. I don't have time to tell you what she concluded. If you want to know, you'll have to ask her directly. 
You can find her in the forensic laboratory. Ah, right. Now, what were you here to see me about? I can give you 7 minutes and 39 seconds of my time. So he's not running quite as spectacularly late anymore. Alright guys, time this. Uh, it is about 1.20 right now. Let's see how long this takes. What exactly is the forensic investigation team that you mentioned before? The British Empire's police force must be become the most exemplary in the world. For that to happen, it's imperative that we embrace forensic science and everything it has to offer. I first created a forensic investigation team a year ago, and now unofficially, of course, to pave the way. Goodness, a year ago? At next month's symposium, I intend to present the results of their work to the world. Once I do that, the House of Lords will be powerless to oppose the creation of a full-scale forensics division. And once that happens, the position of Attorney General will be mine, and criminals will suffer dearly. What do you mean? For too long, these those scoundrels have made a mockery of our legal system with false evidence and bribes. But London scum is about to be rounded up and burnt in the fires of hell. Oh man, he's serious. I intend to see it person to it personally. By creating the finest police force the world has ever known to protect our honor and our future. Look at those eyes. He means every word. Dr. Seath is on is is an extremely reliable coroner. When I officially establish the forensic division at the Scotland Yard, she will run it as my right-hand woman. Now then, speaking of the symposium, Miss Mikotoba. Oh, yes, my lord? Your father should be on high seas as we speak, making his way here to re represent the Empire of Japan. Yes, that's right. I understand he will arrive at the beginning of next month. Are you acquainted, Lord Strongheart? With Professor Mikotoba, I mean? It was many years ago now, yeah, but yes, I remember Dr. Mikotoba very well. If my memory serves, it was some 15 years ago now that your father came to Britain as a visiting student. It was the year I, it was the year I was born, so 16 years ago. And, so yes, yeah, 16 years ago, in fact. Mikotoba was a very a young practitioner of forensic science, and Jugo Jijoku accompanied him as a young promising judge. The punctu punctuationist, punctuationist, and politeness of the Japanese. Oh, at the time, impressed me greatly. Bleh. Not that I wish to imply impoliteness or carelessness on your part in any way. I didn't think that you were. Dr. Mikotoba studied forensics at one of London's large hospitals. Saint si Sinners, if I'm not mistaken. Dr. Seath was also there then, as it happens. Then, Dr. Seath knows my father, does she? She was a young medical assistant at the time, so I doubt their paths cross regularly. But I have no, no doubt they knew each other superficially. After all, Mitsu Dr. Mikitopo was here studying his subject for some six years in total. Six years? That's a long time to be studying abroad, isn't it? And didn't even see uh, Susato for six years, by the way. I lived with my grandmother in those years. So he left his newly born daughter behind and went overseas for six whole years? It was a rather turbulent time at home. Oh, perhaps father wanted a reason to get away. What do you mean, why? Well, clearly something was going on at the time. I wanted to ask you about Lord Von Zeeks, actually. I heard that his older brother was killed some years ago by a mass murderer known as the Professor who targeted nobles and royalty. Is that right? You Japanese are a, th are a thorough lot. You've done your research well. Yes. And you could say it was that very incident that gave rise to the Reaper. What? Why? When his brother Clint Von Zeeks was murdered, 
It was just after Yun Barok had graduated from University of London and became a prosecutor when the obvious criminals who managed to evade conviction in court started disappearing. Rumors quickly spread throughout the capital. Londoners started to say that wherever the bar Baroque von Zeeks went, the ghost of his dead brother wasn't far behind. Oh, my word. So Lord von Zeeks isn't the Reaper. It's the ghost of his brother? Ever since that time, he became a very aloof figure in London's legal circles. Oh yes, Lord Strongheart! Go ahead. It's about Professor Harebrain's experimental machine. We'd like your permission to examine the remains, if possible. Are you well versed in science, then? Not in the slightest. In fact, you could say I was barely aware of the subject at all until recently. Well, the special dispositions... This dispensation legally preventing investigation of the machine is currently being annulled. Within a few hours, Mr. Seath's team of forensic experts will begin their own investigation. But I suppose until then, there's no harm in you looking at the wreckage, as long as you n touch nothing. Thank you. Being able to look at it is better than nothing. And I'll be able to see it too. Your time is up. I still have a minute and some seconds left. I read that all within like seven minutes. I was timing myself. Ha! <laughs> You're, you have to excuse me now, I'm afraid. My next engagement calls. We are extremely sorry to ha have troubled you when you are busy, my lord. So busy, my lord. I have important matters to attend to in preparation for the symposium. You understand. Okay, so Von Zeeks is currently busy. Yeah, he his stud yeah, his studies is currently not available. So I believe this is it. Mr Dr. Seath's laboratory. The chemical smell really assaults the nose, and there's plenty to assault the eyes in here, too. It looks as though the doctor isn't here. But we're here now, so may as well do some sightseeing, don't you think? What seasoned tourists you've become, Mr. Sato. We could just have a little look around, being careful not to upset any restless souls. A oh, label that's highly toxic. Let's drink it. Bad for eyes. The chemical smell is not that good. Watch them over, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you tell? I'm trying very hard to avoid talking about the terrifying contents of this case. It's how I cope. <laughs> We're in preserving ah pres preservation it's like uh, Egyptian. That's probably fine to never know about. <laughs> He's being very coy about things. So they're hopeless disturbing. Ten 
check for something else. No, 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 no. Is that everything? Jeez. Taxidermist. Or what was it? Um, taxidermy. Yep. I didn't realize that's the term for those. I learned that uh, not too long ago watching some shorts. I think it was from Markiplier, Wade, and Bob. Okay, I think I've gotten everything. Okay, so as I figured... Oh, wait. Oh, no. Okay, I was thinking... I thought I clicked that, but I guess not. I was trying to click that, but I was clicking everywhere. Please watch Ledger. It's a credit card friends with team spending, I think. Oh? What is it? Let's see. There's a thick book here. It's thick! It's clear that the team purchases various equipment and supplies on a monthly basis, but... Well, one entry seems rather strange. Really? In what way? They're buying 500 scalpels, scalpels every month. Five? 500? They must be really, they must be working really hard to dissect in court. In I don't know. Judicial autopsies only carry out in certain special circumstances. Scalp and scalpel blades can be sharpened too. It does seem a bit strange. You're right. 500 scalpels a month. What could they possibly be using all of them for? What are you doing? Ah! Sorry, um, we are, um, had something we wanted to ask you, but you weren't here, so... So you thought you'd snoop around. That's acceptable to you people from the East, is it? Well, what do you want? Ah, um, Lord Stronghearts told us, you see, that... It was you who examined the victim's body. Um, Mr. Asman's body, I mean. So we came to ask you about your findings. Well, on Lord Strongheart's advice. Very well. If Lord the, if the Lord Chief Justice has given his consent, I'll tell you what our investigation revealed. But when we're done, you must leave immediately. So, you want to know what the forensic investigation team determined from this, from its examination of the scene. The victims, Mr. Adi Osman, who disappeared from the experiment experimentation stage amid an explosion. And the, uh, Mr. the Mr. Asman, who appeared moments later partway up the crystal tower, were without question one and the same person. That is the team's conclusion. But, but that can't be right. If it was an elaborate trick, we can only speculate about how it was carried out. Let's see. If two people were who looked very similar to each other were involved, they could have made it appear as if one single person had switched places, couldn't they? Very true, but sadly in this instance, that was not the case. The man who disappeared and the man who subsequently reappeared was the same person. The fingerprints at the scene make that quite evident. Ah, fingerprints. They're not officially recognized as forensic evidence in the British justice system. But one day, they will be used as an investigative aid as a matter of course. Oh my, but that would mean... that the instantaneous kinesis actually took place. So where does that leave us? My team was tasked with investigating, not drawing conclusions. 
instantaneous kinesis is impossible, and yet the body did move from one place to another to the other. It's it, this hasn't cleared anything up at all. This just made the whole thing even more of a mystery. Holy death, Batman. Mama, what is this? Uh, where did she spring from? And did she just call the doctor Mama? This is... This is a lawyer, dear. Oh. Um, hello. Not to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Yes, I am a defense lawyer. Ryunosuke Naru... Mama. Yes. Can I cut this one up? What? I've never seen inside an Eastern person before. I want to know what it looks like. Of course you can't. It's a living, it's a live specimen, as you can very well see. Justin, uh, would you, would you allow her to experiment on you? You clearly have some Eastern blood in you. <laughs> Hmm. Boring. I, I think I think I just had a near death experience. Oh dear, Mr. Naruto, you're a, as pale as a corpse. Then let's leave before I'm mistaken for one. Takes one to know one. <laughs> What are you doing? So what are you doing at the moment, Doctor? Keep a close eye on things so no impertinent Easterners think they can look around my office. Are there such impertinent Easterners around? How terrible. Yes, you. She doesn't mince her words, Miss Susato. I think perhaps the time it's time we left. Well, I can't go to the prosecutors. Um, Gina, we were actually hoping that we could investigate the scene again. Yeah, all right. If it's around here, you're like, oh, that's right. Blah, blah, blah. Let me. I've already read it. I've already read some of this, so I'm skipping it. Actually, we've just recently been to see been to see Lord Strongheart. Eh? You what? you've met him? Last time the boss was called last time the boss was called to go and see him he, he waited for three hours and at the cove's office and came back sniffling sniffling tragic well lord strongheart has given us permission to examine the scene as long as we don't touch anything we touch nothing nothing oh yeah honestly all right then go ahead but if it turns out you're lying it, it'll be the boss who gets it. He'll never eat another chip again in his in his life. So you're saying, still saying, all this is above the, is above board, are ya? I'm I'm sure everything will be fine. That really would be tragic. All right then, them's the stairs. Off you go. Thank you, Gina. Oh my, so this is the machine. 
I was supposed to deceive people into thinking that instantaneous kinesis had taken place? Yes, that's right. Or rather, it was the machine. This, it's a little worse for wear at the moment. What an extraordinary lengths Professor Hairbrain went to in order to obtain the research grant. No, 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 no. The professor was tricked as well. He didn't know anything about it. Yes, of course. It is amazing though, isn't it? The scale of the whole affair is so oh, very British. What's that supposed to mean? You look so, so Japanese. <laughs> That's the joke. You're right about that. You'd never see such a grand deception in Japan. That's for sure. Oh, look. Is, is that... Oh, so that's where you are. You just appeared magically out of nowhere. I somehow did not see you on my way up. Weird. Those people just magically appear in front of you, Justin? Like, randomly? Yeah. Huh. Weird. That seems to be a very common thing. Lord Van Zeeks? Also, why is he looking at it? Did he get Lord Strongheart's permission? Probably. So, I think we're more or less done here, aren't we? Shall we, Mr. Sato? Already? He is the Reaper, remember? We do well to keep our distance, I think. But we have permission to be here, from the top. We are perfectly al well allowed to investigate this machine, as long as we don't touch anything. From the top? Do you mean Lord Von Strongheart? Exactly. So we can stay here and stare at this wreckage as, well, for as long as we like. She could have been at the center of the explosion here and it wouldn't have bent her steel will. Oh, we got the bird cage. How do we put that in our pocket? something crunchy. I think some of these wasabi peas. He does have vertigo. Oh no! Justin, my battery depleted. Can you come here and get me a new one? No. <sighs> but Justin, I can't play the game without a controller. Good luck with that. Why do you gotta be so mean to me? He wants to go with Susato. Just say you're that you have feelings. Mm, 
roofs more. Onion roofs. <laughs> <laughs> Taste the roof. Taste the rainbow. Looks like uh, there's nothing left to look at, Justin. Uh, I think I'm done with this investigating. Everything else has a check mark. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else worth checking. I mean, I checked all of the machine. Everything is up here that's different. You know, there's nothing here that it requires my attention. I think I'm just done. Yeah, I think it's reasonable. Yeah. Uh, but I do want to say hi to Brock, so let me just say hi to him at least once. Just, just in case. Yeah, just... just I mean, I can't be rude, you know? The prosecutor and I are going to be working together for a while, you know? Uh, least approachable man in the world winner it ten, to ten years in a row. Be strong, Mr. Naruto. Your country and your assistants stand firm behind you. The country is pretty flimsy at the current moment. Um, Lord Von Zeeks? What? Um, uh, well, beautiful weather we're having, isn't it? I thought I was making it quite clear that I didn't want to be disturbed. Apparently, your new bunnies are unequipped to read the signs. Oh, I read them. So, what are you doing here? Excuse me. Entry to this area is prohibited. Ah, well, the thing is... Lord Chief, Lord Chief Justice Strongheart granted us permission to investigate. On the condition, we, don't dis didn't, we didn't uh, disturb anything. And yet, you've managed to disturb me. You're not part of the whole thing, so technically speaking, we can dis disturb you. So your logic is not there, unless you're considering yourself part of the whole birdcage. Ah! Never mind. State your business, then. Come to think of it, there are quite a few things I'd like to ask Lord Von Zeeks about. Not at... Uh, hold on. Not least of which is that awful... Uh, case, even though it's nothing to do with this. Ask away, Mr. Naruto. You won't know unless you try. Oh boy, here we go. We're gonna ask some personal stories, everyone. Get ready. What? 
how how much uh how likely will Lord Von Zeeks get triggered by this? So Clint was the name of your older brother, I understand. Lord Von Zeeks? You need bunnies. I always have to be on guard whenever you're around. So you've been investigating me, haven't have you? Oh, no, 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 no. It's not like that. Oh, well, all right. It's a little bit like that. My older brother was also a prosecutor. He was the pride of the Von Zeke's family. But tragically, a vicious killer took him from us. The professor, you mean? <laughs> is, is something funny? That's the extent of what you've discovered, is it? I shouldn't be surprised. Sorry, there's more to it then? Lackluster work is very much your trademark, isn't it? Ugh, you're too kind. Are you gonna tear all Nipponese with the exact same brush next? So tell me, what's your interest in that historic incident? As it happened, Lord Von Zeke, there's a rather curious case that's come to our attention. Are you aware of Madame Tuspell's Museum of Waxwork by any chance? I am, naturally. I believe that since last month I featured in one of the displays there for public scorn. Of course, the infamous Reaper of the Bailey would have to be exhibited, wouldn't he? Well, a particular waxwork has been stolen from the place and held for ransom. A particular waxwork which... Ugh. Wait, you mean... Yes, it's the professor. Mr. Sholmes is investigating the case as we speak. I was unaware of that. He's turned as white as a sheet. You mean whiter than he is right now? Because he's pretty white. Are you, the police trying to locate the engineer, Mr. Drebber, already? Surely that goes without saying. We are very keen to see him found as well. The trouble is, we don't have much to go on aside from the description of the man we heard in court earlier. Which, according to the Professor Hairbrain, was a tall, thin gentleman who has straight white hair and wears a black monocle. So, so, I was just wondering, I mean, I realize it's probably not possible, but, um, we very much appreciate any clues you can give us. Wow, Susato-san, he knows how to take a bull by the horns. He knows how to do the Susato throw. Fine, why not? I have a photograph of a man here from an investigation ten years ago. Though it appears he already had a black monocle at the time. What? Oh, no, nothing. I, I, I was just surprised that you shared that with us. We all need the man's testimony in court tomorrow. Which means we have to do everything we possibly can to track him down in the short time available. So why wouldn't I show you the photograph? Hey, at least he's better than some people like Edgeworth originally. <laughs> Update the autopsy report, my butt. What is it about Lord Von Zeeks? Sometimes I can't work him out at all. Take him to a love hotel. Now I'll work him out. <laughs> The file I requested for trial tomorrow. Thank you. Are you alright? Who 
is this man, Mr. Roto? Lord Von Zeke's apprentice, apparently. So I'm not the only one. Satsan can see it too. Um, Lord Von Zeke's, may we speak with your apprentice for a moment? With him, why? Kazuma-sama! Way to be just pull a blunt out there. Kazu-sama? I don't believe it! Your... your posture, your presence... It, it can only be... It's you, isn't it, Kazuma-sama? I mean, anyone can have a posture like that. There's... There's, <laughs> act there's actors, there's people who can have it. How could you say that's exactly the person? There are, at this current moment, probably like millions of people. But still, there are millions and millions and millions of people that could have the exact same posture. They look alike. Heck, I, I learned recently, Justin, there's actually a fun fact. Um, there is a guy who is a professional baseball player. Um, apparently, there is an exact same person who has the exact same name. It looks exactly the same with a beard and everything. Has glasses. Was going in for a surgery for his left arm. The same guy also had the same surgery as left arm. They act the same mannerisms and everything. Almost same height and everything. But they're not related. So... In a sense, you can't just say that just because of a Polish posture day, it ain't gonna be the same thing. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> Sato doesn't know all that. What? Susato, you said? Susato doesn't know all that, yeah. Uh, I mean, she has the book of everything. You know, the book she keeps <laughs> opening. No, it's literally that. She, every time she opens it up, she's like, I know this. I know that. I know this. I know that. She even found that, you know, very vague, unlike used, like, l like court law thing that people did not really realize until she pointed it out. I feel something strange the very first time I encountered this cloak figure, as if I knew him somehow. Can it? Can it really be you, Kazuma? Wait! Too late. What's going on here? Oh, I want to talk about Enoch Trevor again. I'm sorry. <laughs> he's just so fascinating. Sorry. I mean, he's a mystery person that we only see one picture of him. I mean, when you only see one picture of a man, don't you get fascinated by him? By There's no other information about him? It's the mind of a curiosity... Oh, and the mind of a human being curious and the cat. What is your interest in my apprentice exactly? You act as if you know the man or something. Well, um... Since when has he... Has he been in your care? I don't recall you ever having an apprentice before I left Britain six months ago. Lord Strongheart introduced him to me about three months ago now with instructions to mentor him as a prosecutor. But he didn't tell you why, did he? The man appears to be something, to be suffering from amnesia. He's forgotten every last detail about himself. He has amnesia? Tomorrow he will appear in court at, by, at my side. What? to serve as my judicial assistant on Lord Strongheart's orders. You'll be in court with us. Now then, unless I'm much mistaken, I believe this conversation has run its course. Oh, yes, um, thank you. I definitely saw a reaction there. When Susato called out like that, it really seemed to hit a nerve. When she called out Kazuma-sama, You already met that masked man, hadn't you, Mr. Naruto? Yes. Yesterday, in fact, at Lord Von Zeke's office. 
Siegses. Is Lord von Siegses. They have... They have two S's there. Normally, it's just a apostrophe. I see. And if, if Kazuma-sama really is still alive, it means that Mr. Sholmes lied to us. I mean, I kind of figured that. I know. We're going to need to speak to him about that. You're going to have to leave now. What? The forensic investigation team are due to arrive shortly. If they find you here, it will cause problems. What sort of problems? Foreign, foreign affair problems. Well, we would, we could do without that. All right, we'll be on our way. Let's go, Susato. Of course. Now it's the time to try this. Gina, well. That changed something. There you go, it's Odo. This Gina. Yeah, I'm still learning me letters at the moment. I only know A to E, so if it ain't too much lid in trouble. Uh, actually, Gina, it's the back of the what the heck? Back of the card that's important. Eh? How come? They have just a dirty old smudge on the back, that's all. Turns out that this is very high quality French machine oil. It has a very particular scent, apparently. You don't say. Let's have a whiff then. You sure? I don't. I don't smell nothing. No, no, no. We didn't mean that you should smell it. Oh, right. Yamin Tobe. His sense of smell is so good. He can track people over the oceans, can't he? Professor Hairbrain informs us that this oil is unique to Mr. Drebber's workshop. Toby! Oh, he's so cute. Nah, he's pretty ugly. Oh. It's okay. I knew you had bad taste in dogs. Yeah, I know. I do have bad taste in dogs. <laughs> Says a person who likes corgis. <laughs> I think he's picked up a scent. So, you know what I mean? If he, if he follows the scent of this oil, Toby could lead us to the Dodgy's Cove's workshop? That's right. That's exactly what we were hoping. Alright then. We'll give it a go. I'll just borrow that. W wait. When did you... Once a pickpocket? If I can lead everyone to Jebra's workshop, I'll be the boss's boss for next week. For next week. Yes, Gina. I'm sure you'll be promoted. Poor, poor Gregson. Right in, Odo. Leave it to me. Leave it to me. Sorry. We're going after the Dodgy Engineer's Cove right this minute. Oh, but hang on. Someone's supposed to be on guard duty here all the time. I'm afraid we can't help. We need to get on with our investigation as well, Gina. Oh, all right. Oh, well, never mind. Ain't gonna be me what gets it in the in the neck. It'll be the boss. Poor, poor Gregson again. Ready? Ready, Toby? Got the old scent? Have ya? Come on then, boy. See you later. I do hope the scent of that oil leads them to the swindler's workshop. Yes, I hope so too. Ideally, before the dog swims across the channel of France. Swims to France. Well, I think we've done all the investigation we can here for now. If we could just determine the whereabouts of Mr. Drebber. 
Oh, I forgot to have the dialogue with him because he would show the picture. Ah, eh, whatever. That's fine. I'm sure Gina and little Toby won't let us down. Now then. Do you think we ought to try to speak to Mr. Sholmes at this point? We have things to discuss. I'm dying to meet him again after all these months. Yes, it's quite possible he might know something useful. You're right. We ought to find him. We ought to find him at Madame Tusbell's. He's supposed to be working there as a temporary waxwork exhibit. Yes, Iris told me about about his latest unusual venture. We should be at the end of this part. So remember when I told you there's this really long investigation section in this game? This is it. This is it. I mean, the third case, this third case, the first investigation part was a while. Let me double check. I know, I know the third one was also, the, the first part of the investigation was also pretty long. Uh, yeah, I've got a few things, Sherlock. Yeah, it was decently long. This whole, this whole case is decently long, but the, the court cases were short. Oh my, no wonder it's called the House of Horrors. I like to turn my on my heels and go straight home. Be via the confectionery. You don't have heels. Well, high heels, I should say. Probably like the normal foot heels, never mind then. She doesn't have feet. <laughs> Being scared makes you crave sweets? I can understand that. But you know, there's something about that waxwork over there. It looks exactly like Mr. Sholmes down the very last detail. Ah, ha. Huh. What is it? Oh, sorry. I think you'll find that's the temporary waxwork himself. Ah. The friend of my de de dedicated employee. Oh, yes. Hello again. It's Ryunosuke. Ryunosuke Naruhodo. I must say, I'm quite spellbound by the great detective. He is a marvel. My precious waxwork is already back where it belongs. You... you don't mean... Ah, oh, yes. But yes, the mystery is solved already. Wow. Mr. Sholmes can really engage his brain when he's hungry enough. As you so as you can see, he has returned to his habitual duties. Yes. His habitual duties? Alors, do you not disturb? Huh? -uh? Poor Susato. She looks very perplexed. Oh, Toast! What's up? Sorry, I didn't see you right away. How you been doing, Toast? So, Justin. Shall we disturb? Justin. Justin! Justin! Disturb the, the lady painting? Box figure? What? <laughs> what you were hovering over. I, I was gonna say, shall we disturb the the habituary duty? Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. You really need to speak to Mr. Sholmes. I am longing to say hello again. But where is he? I think you might find that he's quite nearby, actually. <laughs> Finish Cold War Lamb and now have to beat the bosses all again. I have that game. I do want to play that game. It kind of feels like a Tomodachi Live type game I could play on stream again. You know Cold of the Lambs, right, Justin? Yeah. Yeah. I know of it. I don't know much about it. Well, it's kind of like Tomodachi where you can kind of name sheeps into like into the into the game and make a cult, but. Occasionally, you have to sacrifice some things, so I think it would be a funny thing where we name each other as a part of the cult, and then whoever gets sacrificed gets sacrificed. 
isn't it also a little bit more actiony? A little bit, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think it would be funny to do on stream. Mm hmm. We're like, Justin, you came in. Now sacrifice me. He's like, Justin, no, you only just came in yesterday. I'm dying. <laughs> But yeah, how do you think of Cold of the Lamb? I know I heard it was really good. I do want to play it though. Oh? What what do you Justin, he used the uh, teleportation. When did Herlock Holmes become a ninja? He was always a ninja. I mean it will make sense, he appears out of nowhere. So, indeed, my dear fellows, it, it is I, the world famous great detective and waxwork Herlock Sholmes. Susato san, Susato san! My most humble apologies. I thought I'd died and gone to eternal paradise for a moment via London. Well, London is not a cesspool, so you know what? Yeah. My dear madame, allow me to make amends by offering you a tasty dedication, a uh, free dedic deduction at some point. Dedication. <laughs> As long as it's not questionable street food quality. I don't understand. Why are you working as a waxwork here, Mr. Sholmes? Merely a secret identity, you understand. Through the case is largely solved now. The case is largely solved now. Largely solved? We're talking about the waxwork abduction, I pre- Oh wait, that's Ryunosuke. <clears throat> We are talking about the waxwork abduction, I presume. Indeed, we are, my good fellow. As I predicted, it was as easy as proverbial pie. Though, I confess, I'm yet to take partake a pie, proverbial veal or otherwise, or any food so far today, for that matter. Rumble, rumble, rumble. That stomach rumble echoed through the whole museum. So how did you manage to solve it so quickly? Ah, well, do you remember I said it was largely solved? Anyway, I simply negotiated with the culprit. Are you familiar with the so-called telephone? Oh yes, it's the most in modern invention, allowing you to hold a conversation with people far away. In Japan, only Imperial Capital and a handful of other cities are connected as uh, yet. This morning, a telephone call was received here from the perpetrator of the abduction. As such, I was able to negotiate terms, and in the end, the wax was returned. That's amazing. Just between you and I, it would appear that the culprit had always intended to return the stolen wax work in any event. Oh, but I thought whoever was responsible had it demanded a ransom. Uh, no? Yes, I think perhaps the ransom demand was necessary to avoid unwanted suspicion regarding the true motive. But what? But does does that not mean your negotiating was entirely unnecessary? A fact that I must ask you to keep from Madame Tuspels at all costs. A hungry young Iris awaits my return to Baker Street. After all. Or Iris. To be honest, um, Ryunosuke uh, is surrounded by people that can be a little bit incompetent. I'm just saying. Now then, do I sense that you have some business with this great waxwork? We're in the process of trying to track somebody down. 
Oh? Yes, a man by, by the name of Enoch Drepper. He's, swin he's the swindler who duped Professor Hairbrain and the engineer who built the kinesis machine. A swindler and an engineer? Quite the modern man. He also seems to be, be a conjurer of sorts, too, with considerable knowledge of stage magic. You really need to locate him before the trial resumes tomorrow morning. But we have so few clues to go on. That's the trouble. Do you have any good ideas? What's up, Mike? Hey, pretty much couldn't sleep, so I was like, you know what, might as well. That's fine. Just reading a lot. Shoals. Mm-hmm. I have no I no data yet. It is a capital mistake to have good ideas before one has data. If I knew something of a man's appearance, at least I may be a, in a better position to help. Yes, Drepper's appearance. Fortunately for you, however, fortunately for you, however, presently I have little to occupy myself and little to fill my stomach. As soon as you find any clue, no matter how small, I should gladly give you my thoughts on it. Well, unfortunately, Justin, we don't have any picture of the sort, right? The person we got is not confirmed to be Enoch Drepper, so clearly we don't have any Enoch Drepper on us. Mr. Sholmes, did you lie to us? My dear Mr. Naruto, say that piercing stare. What is this about? Last winter, we were first on our way to Britain aboard that the steamship. Your words were very clear. So then, let's unravel this mystery. And discover what events led to this curious murder. You told us that it was a murder. And you examined Cosmo's body. Indeed, and wherein lies the problem? You met him earlier today. The victim, Cosmo Asoji. You're quite sure. He was wearing some sort of mask and was apparently suffering from amnesia. But yes, I'm quite sure it was Kasuma sama. You must have known at that time, Mr. Sholmes, that he wasn't actually dead. Well, I can only assume I swept up in the murderous atmosphere of the moment. But the fellow wasn't dead at all. <laughs> Priceless. I don't suppose that performance would pass muster, would it, Nastarodo? I could believe that the crewman present at the time made a mistake. But not you, Mr. Sholmes. I will now tell you everything. At the first importance, my dear fellow. Of the first importance, my dear fellow. Great detectives are... Are... Won't, wait. Great detectives are won't to lie. It will serve you well to... What? Uh, great detectives are won't... What? English is hard in this game. Justin. Great I'm, I haven't heard not one single catchphrase for homes in this and it, i'm like it it might it might be one of those like um translation changes because uh the reason why this is actually sherlock holmes in japanese so they actually use the name but they changed his name to avoid copyright issues so there's likely a chance that because of the copyright issues under sherlock holmes's name they changed up some of his phrases man I was kind of hoping elementary, uh, elementary would be in here. I think he says it occasionally, but not like in the way that you would think it. Like my elementary, my dear, whatever kind of thing. Like he says elementary, it's elementary or something like that. Like again, or it... there is another specific pieces of group that 
I do know more of a group of it's a few sentences if anything um well either way um I don't know the logics all I know is that apparently Sholmes is the name given because of copyright issues potentially I wish a person could wish yep there's still parts of the game that still um left to be played so maybe but again it's hard to say great detectives True. great detectives are wont to lie are wont to lie it will serve you well to remember that please mr sholmes tomorrow in court you will find yourself on the threshold of a great very great mystery for now i'm afraid that is all i can say Holmes, would you cast your eyes over this photographic print? It, it It's of Enoch Dreber. The face of the engineer we seek. Well, all English men look broadly the same, of course. So looking at the photograph won't be particularly instructive. Are you all right, Mr. Sholmes? Ah, oh, yes, forgive me. Very, in very interesting, this. Very interesting indeed. What's wrong, Mr. Sholmes? You've turned quite pale all of a sudden. I have a suggestion, Mr. Nardo. Will you indulge me? Oh, well, what is it? As I explained to you when you arrived, the missing waxwork has been returned. And I personally reinstalled it in the exhi exhibit from which it was taken behind those thick curtains. Oh yes, the professor exhibit, is it? Isn't it? Would you like to see it for a meal of five shillings? That's a special one-time only price, you understand? What? The opportunity won't come again, I might add. Wouldn't you like to see the fruits of my labor? Oh, well... We do have a rather pressing investigation carry out. Perhaps we could postpone. Could, we could postpone. The price is very reasonable. Five shillings. I think you'll find it well worth. Are you... Are you being quite serious, Mr. Sholmes? Surely you need only to look at my expression. To ascertain if this is seriousness or silliness. Both. I can never tell with you. That's the point. Very well, it couldn't hurt. Here's your five shillings. Gratefully received. So, the special exhibit awaits. Behind the curtain, I invite you to pursue it at your leisure. Well, the money's been spent, so let's go see the special exhibit. Hmm. Through these heavy curtains, at last. Oh, come on, really? Five shillings we've had to pay. Doesn't seem right somehow that Mr. Sholmes slipped the money into his own pocket, does it? No. Ah, we could ask Gina to retrieve it for us using her special skills. Pickpocketing police officers and did diddling detective. Is this what makes Great Britain great? Not to mention demigod prosecutors taking the law into their own hands or chip loving inspectors. Inspector Gregson comes off rather well in that list, I think. Oh dear, I felt a shiver run. I felt a shiver run down my spine as soon as I we walked in here. Mr. Sato, I say we turn on our heels and go straight home via a big, a via a really big confectionery. We, 
We certainly can't do that. We've paid five shillings already. True. Actually, now I'm looking a little more closely. We've paid good money to see an exhibit that's clearly incomplete. The nerve of a great diddling detective is far more terrifying than anything else in this place. This must be what Mr. Sholmes meant when he said the case was largely solved. Be that as it may, Mr. Sholmes heavily implied there'd be a clue about en the engineer in here, didn't he? But where? Since we already paid five shillings, let's do five shillings worth of investigations, shall we? I don't know how much is the shilling. Yes, we we will get what we paid for. Is that fear or frustration that makes Susato san's voice tremble? Shillings are England currency, if I remember right. Yeah, but at this time in this like early 1900, like 1900 basically, um, how much are they? Is like more or less? I don't know. Let me think here, because technically in those days, English, well, more of America, are like a dollar would be considered huge. Mm hmm. So, I'm thinking a shilling would probably be maybe a little more, maybe even a little less than. Probably still. Hmm. Tricky. All right. <clears throat> this. This one is even. I thought that was a spade. Spade is in a shell. Oh, she made a joke that, like, uh, early on, there was, like, a shovel in the their apartment area at office, and then it'd be like, it's a spade. They dig up stuff. And it's like, that's exactly the same thing as a shovel. All oh, right, they did do that back in the day. The question is, why would they keep such a old evidence into uh, in this exhibit if that was the case? Well, they're probably trying to leave the crime scene as well, close to the original as possible. Well, that's actually. Well, if you're talking about, like, the wax... This is not a crime scene, so the thing is, is this is a wax exhibit that represents the each special cases, and this one is a very, very serious special case. And it's supposed to represent the killers and the crime scenes uh, accurately, but I would assume that they wouldn't use the actual evidences as part of the exhibit, though. Yeah, I guess that's true. Like, theoretically, that would be bad. Because, like, it would be like, hey, if this person who took a picture or murdered, um, it has the solid evidence of the picture of the murderer, and they made a wax exhibit of that thing, but put it with that wax exhibit, that would be really questionable because a lot of, like, those evidences are put into, like, a case load or whatever or destroyed later on, depending on how serious it is. It's just weird. True. Yeah, it's just weird, a thought process. Oh yeah, I can see where you're coming from. Mm -hmm.
They took the picture, though, and they can't see the face clearly. It's weird. You'd be surprised. Uh, what? What? What on earth? How can... I don't believe it. A black monocle. It's not at all. Is, is it possible that this man is... Yes. It's Enoch Drebber. The color of his hair is different, but... It's unmis unmistakably him. Indeed it is. Mr. Sholmes! This man... Is the subject of your present hunt, I believe. Yes, that's... That's right. Just who is this man? Why is he here in this exhibit? Why... And why does the convict behind him have no head? The head was missing when the model was returned by the thief who stole it. What a surprise. So then the case isn't yet solved, is it? Did I not say so myself? Largely solved were my words, I believe. But I must locate the missing head to this suite, as Madam would say, or I'll be in grave trouble. A ah, very hungry Iris still awaits my return to Baker Street. Preferably with rations. Ugh. Do you know, though, something about this room is strange. Strange? What do you mean? Well, the displays in the House of Horrors are supposed to depict real events, are they not? Indeed they are, Mr. Sato. Do go on. And as terrifying as they are, the scenes in the other exhibits are believable. Hold on, I'm just gonna change around a okay, few things. I'm failing to get where you're going with this but well we're gonna find out but this one this surely couldn't ever really have happened could it it's because like he this guy found a supposedly a grave and what looks like a person coming out of it right that's why it looks a little bit unbelievable I'm going to check out this camera, as they mentioned. Wait, what? Okay, so supposedly there's a picture back here. She looks so devastated. <laughs> I think it's time I educated a little. About the nature of the instance involving the professor ten years ago. I believe I told you a little about the professor yesterday, did I not? He took the lives of five victims, every one being either a member of a member of the Atrit aristocracy or royalty. All were attacked by a norm by an enormous hunting hound and had their throats ripped from their bodies. Oh gosh, an enormous hound? How awful. After taking the life of his fifth victim, the killer was apprehended. It was a case of unprecedented magnitude in Britain. You understand accordingly. The professor was tried in a closed court. No members of the public were permitted. Closed court? 
So you mean the pro that the professor's identity... As you've surmised, my dear fellow, his identity was never made public. Naturally, he was found guilty and summarily sentenced to death by hanging. He was buried in the grave at Low Gate Cemetery, which adjo adjoins the rear of the prison where he had been held. However, that was not the end of the affair. Oh? The very night that he was buried, the con convicted man came back to life. Came back to life? He clawed his way out of the ground and emerged into the moonlit graveyard. I just noticed that there's an owl back there. That is creepy. The exhibit here depicts that very scene as described by the sole witness to those chilling events. There was a witness? I mean, it's the, literally the guy right in front of you. Oh, but of course, my dear fellow, it was none other than the young man in the white overcoat. Enoch Drebber, he saw it happen? So this is the waxwork model of Enoch Drebber? Ten years ago, the court convicted professor having been gibbeted and buried emerged from his grave in the dead of night. The sole witness to the unimaginable scene was this young man. From appearances, I would say he was about 20 years old. It was so horror it's so horrifying. Scared out of his wits, the young driver ran to a nearby police station to report the incident. And the sheer terror of what he'd seen is said to have turned his hair white overnight. Yes, as shown in the photograph we have of him, his hair is completely white. For the following few days, the story of what he'd seen was on the fr every front page in the capital. The public was frantic for every last detail about the killer who'd come back to life. As you've seen, the exhibit was even created here at Madame Tusbell's. I can quite understand why the man's hair turned white, certainly, but what I don't understand. Thank you is what Mr. Drebber was doing in the first place. In a lonely graveyard in the middle of the night. Yes, what was he up to? The professor's acts of terror threw London's upper classes into a complete panic ten years ago. It was a great scandal, one might say, at the very highest levels of society. And since the killer's identity was never made public, rumors about uh, rumors abandoned. After all, no killer had ever before systematically employed a dog as a weapon of murder. Yes, I can imagine the impact of the case must have had. But in time, of course, the rumors abated. So too did the talk of shocking witness uh, witness account of the convict who came back to life. It was forgotten, dismissed as a dubious ghost story, as preposterous paler tale parlor tale but, but why did people stop believing it why simply because there was no resurrection to speak of as was established in fact what what do you mean by no resurrection the police investigation the, investigated the grave in low gate cemetery and published their findings the convict's body was found to be buried exactly where it had been Following the execution, it had been the No, but that would mean Mr. Drepper must have lied to the police and the newspapers. That would appear to be the only logical explanation, yes. A young man subsequently vanished from society and left, ha ha and, and nothing has been heard of him since. It's rather striking then that he should resurface now, don't you think? Of course, the convicted murderer couldn't really have come back to life. That's not possible. Jeb Jebber's hair is unusually white. If that really did happen overnight as a result of a shock, 
It's hard to believe the incident was an out and out lie. Hmm, there. They would be surprised at what happens in the dark. It yes, it would. I think I have some stuff pieced together, but obviously I am not going to be uh, saying it until it actually is confirmed or not. I don't know much on anything in this. Well, currently we're trying to figure out the murderer. We're trying to find this Enoch Drebber. Because apparently he's the key to figuring out a case that is convicted a scientist for a murderer. So it's pretty much a we need to find people, but this extra mystery adds to who are they really kind of thing. Who knows? It could be Buck Dremmer himself. It, it would, yeah. That would be, that would take a twist. Again, we're there. I have a theory, but I'm not gonna say anything right now because it's gonna it's gonna take some time. Interesting. Naruhodo ne. So there is nothing else I need to do. Thick skin, thick head, more like. I fully agree with the statement. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes can be a little bit thick headed, to be honest. Nora Odo, what the bleeding Nora Odo? How, how, how have you gone and done? Gina, what are you doing here? I asked Aris, and she said this is where you be. So, so Gina, it's not so loud in the museum. Madam Tuspels will have you take a position as a wax trick if you're not careful. I think there might be more pressing concern. More pressing. Concern. I still had some flash power left from six months ago, so... So... That's right, Gina, we understand, but please put down the gun. What the heck? Overreaction, Mus. Sorry, I, I got scared. You should try being the one on, on the other end of that barrel. So what brings you here, Gina? What brings me here? What do you think? We found it. We found the Dodie's Cove's workshop. What? You found Drebber's workshop? Yep. Toby's nose took me straight there. The boss and the others are heading over there now in the in the drag. So come on. There, 
So here's the ad here's the address. I got the boss to write it out. Oh, thank you, Gina. We'll make our way there at once. All right then. See you there. You go. Don't mind me. I'll just stay here being still. What? He has no eyes. He has no eyes. I know my place in the exhibit over there. Of course, Herlock Sholmes doesn't have any eyes in his name. No, that's Sherlock Holmes. Remember, when you have no eyes, that's an imposter. That's Sherlock Holmes. The real person we know is Herlock Sholmes. <laughs> oh dear. Someone is feeling sorry for himself. Let's go, Mr. Sholmes. You're coming. Your words hearten me, I must say. But uh, if I were to shirk my duties here, Madam would have me pay momentary recompense. Pence and the iris's dinner plate the plate would be empty once more forget it i'll pay for everything then there's no mo not a moment to lose my dear fellow i shall hail carriage at once no offer to share the cost from mr sholmes then i shall gl gladly pay half mr naruto thank you mrs sato right let's go don't ever Ooh. The determination of a hungry man's stomach. You never know. It's true. That looks like... Oh! It's another super high voltage instantaneous kinesis machine. Indeed it would appear so. Though only a prototype, naturally. Ah, so you got here then. Gina, well done for finding this place. And in such little time, you've really worked miracles. It's Dolby Eaters, the who's the miracle worker. Oof. What is wrong with your eyes? What is wrong with everyone's eyes? Ah, uh, I thought you lot would show up before wrong. Hello, Inspector. That's one knitted brow. He looks like he's... Eat an lemon, not a big bag of fish of chips. I mean, fish and chips could have lemon. It's true. You know what? I kind of want to get some fish and chips tomorrow. <laughs> so you're sharing, right? Only if you plan to hang out with me tomorrow. Physically. I don't hear a no from Justin. <laughs> Better be some good fish and chips. Depends. Do you I'm want like? Wondering. Uh, do you want like high high? Uh, you want high high end fish and chips, or you're fine with any fish and chips? Uh, not frozen. <laughs> uh, what'd you say, Mike? No, I'm kind of like thinking about it too. I mean, there's one uh, nearby. I can tell, like, there is a one nearby us. I'm not going to say it right now because obviously I don't want to say it alive on stream. But, no, yeah. Uh, hold on. I could uh, save it. There you go. I typed it, so you guys it can see. It's even closer by, but yeah, that's, that's, that's also good. I mean, it's it's close by to both of us, so, you know, it's close oh, I, I said there's, there's one even closer by, but yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, for you, but yeah, probably, yeah. But those are good. I've tried them before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Inspector, is there any sign of the engineer? Certainly not. We didn't find our soul in here. Oh... What a shame. Well, I wait. <clears throat> well, thank you for letting us know about this place and giving us a chance to investigate. According to what Gina tells me, we only found it thanks to a clue that you lot turned up. I wouldn't want to say it. Go to Paris. I wouldn't wa want to say go to Paris with a debt of gratitude unpaid now, would I? Thank you. 
Anyway, if you're hoping to snoop around here, I'd get cracking. Lord Von Zinx and the Forensic Investigating Team are on the way here as we speak. Oh, them again. I imagine you've got the picture by now. You, They don't take too kindly to lawyer types. Right. So then, my dear fellow, let's turn up this place upside down while well, we have the chance. And you, Sholmes. Pardon? They take even less kindly to great detectives than they do to lawyers. <laughs> very droll, Grixon. Very droll. What the heck is droll? But you may consider me nothing more than a... inconspicuous am just going to With no eyes. Right then. Let's see what we can find in here. God dang it. Ah. <coughs> it's, wait, what? Did he say back massager? Most of the person looking back massager, that's for sure. Oh my god. Would you like a massage? to see. Well, you don't have permission, and no one's gonna give it to you. <laughs> oh my god. Justin. He's so smug. I was gonna say, you should totally learn how to Photoshop so you can have this face as, like, the emote. Uh, Gregson looked as though he really enjoyed that. <laughs> right, mind the grease. Who's ever in there? Open up! This is Scotland Yard! Clump, 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 clump. Squeak! Clunk. Oh my, someone is in there. Alright, this rotten blade in the rock. My dear Gregson, as I said only minutes ago, if only. If only it were counter countinist, I could unlock door in less than a minute. <sighs> Fine, I'll take the rap for it. Just get through the blasted door. Creak. There, you may enter at will. Well, it was less than a minute. You come 
confused. You confused minutes with seconds, I think. Well, he said less than a minute, and it was less than a minute. He never said it had to be less than a second. Time is the essence, I feel. What are we waiting for? Nothing for it, I suppose. This is an emergency. There is a strong possibility that behind the door is the engineer you all seek. Be prepared for action, my dear fellow. Yes. What? What's happened in here? Why is everything upside down? Rats. There ain't no one in here after all. But there but there must be. It was only moments ago that we heard those those noise. Maybe that was the sound of Jebra running away. But there's only one door into this room. There's the window. And no windows that could afford that could afford an escape route. Those skylights are too high. What's that up there? Are they footprints on the ceiling? Blow me! Uh, take me out to dinner first. And take me to a level there first. <laughs> well, I'll be here then. forgot he said that. Hey, remember, it's pronounced Blaum. Blow me. Blow me. Ah, yes. Look. No, I was making a reference to the love guru. I never watched that, unfortunately. Oh. While we're on a tangent, and because it's put prints on the ceiling, or the, you know what I mean, the, the whatever you call that. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, K, K could probably, you know, jump that high and make it to those windows. No, she, no, she can't. R remember, she can, she can get down from high those windows, but she can't, like, you know, jump back up, because that's what's clearly it's what happened. It's a joke! I don't know if you were telling that as a literal joke or like a stab at her joke. Kay's precious. No, she wasn't. I just wanted to include her. No, she isn't. She's terrible and she's a very incompetent person. <laughs> also not wrong, but also. <laughs> <laughs> I made an investigation joke earlier and I forget what I, I said. Uh, I forget. I don't know. Future Justin could probably figure it out. Looks like someone was trying to burn up something in a hurry. Also, yeah, this is investigation is super long. It's already been like three hours. Yeah, I was not kidding. Oh, that looks like a set of blueprints. To what? To the Professor Hairbrain's Barney Barney machine, is it? Blimey! If we had these, there would be have been no need to muck about trying to investigate all that scrap metal. There is something of great interest here too. This rope was lying on the floor at the foot of the pillar of that pillar. A rope? What's significant about that? I, I, I'm having a big sense of deja vu right now, Justin. Show, I don't know. Sherlock Holmes in this scene makes me feel like I've already seen this picture before. Like this whole, like this screen image. That's interesting. I'm having a huge sense of deja vu. Maybe I've passed by it like on the internet or something briefly. But then again, I had zero contact, so I don't know. A rope? What's significant about that? Never mind. You see, but you do not observe, Mr. Naruho, though. Ouch. You must investigate the room entire room thoroughly, and before the forensic investigation team arrive, too. Wait, can I... I can leave the office, <laughs> Justin! Through the floor, then.
Isn't there a Susato shoot up or something? Shorms, have you found something? Oh, Mr. Naruto, yes, in point in point of fact, something rather fascinating. What do you make of this? Um, hmm, let's see. I've never seen anything like it before. It looks like a other Oh. Hey, don't interrupt me reading. Okay, let me read that again. It looks like a bundle of cigars wrapped up in a large watch to me, but ah! <laughs> Mr. Sato, what's the matter? That's a... Surely that's a time bomb? Is it? it? What did you say? A, a time bomb? Um, sorry, but... What is a time bomb? Exactly. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> you truly are one of a kind, Mr. Naruto. I feel like... Even if you don't know exactly what a time bomb is... You hear bomb and that it gets... That should get you, like, I don't know, riled up. I feel like that should be a natural response, Justin. I won't take that as a compliment. Huh. You don't know nothing, do you, Odo? You haven't ha got a clue what it is either, You have you, Gina? I invite you to consult a dictionary later, Mr. Naruto. But this particular specimen is no time bomb, though I confess it has a very similar appearance. Oh, oh, well, thank goodness, but then what is it? I see, so that's it. Goodness, Mr. Sholmes, have you seen the to the heart of the matter? There are times when I consider my lo lot f most unfair. But I'm fated never to know how it feels to be a flounder as you do when a puzzle presents itself. But I have learned to accept the hardships that come with being a great detective, Mr. Susato. Here we go. I feel a great deduction coming. Once again, I can draw two conclusions from the scene we see before us. The first is that the, that the inverted nature of the furniture in this room is the work of Dreber himself. I mean, that kind of comes to show a lot. Oh, but how did could you? And the second conclusion is that the small advice on the floor there is without question completely genuine. Please, Mr. Sholmes, you must explain everything. It would be my it would be a pleasure. After all, it's a great detective's civic duty to teach Scotland Yards the finer points of the trade. It's not good. <laughs> Why didn't they use this earlier? Well, Inspector Gregson seems delighted with the idea anyway. <laughs> oh, you, mu you deflected the inspector's glare with such fortitude there, Mr. Sholmes. Well done. You're too kind, my dear madam. I hereby de de dedicate this deduction to you. Kyle. Kindly stand just there, Miss Susato. Biz it is late, my dude. Well, um, I, um, happy morning to you. Top Good of the morning, morning, Biz. Yeah, seven hours in. I wasn't expecting this section of the game to be this long. I was expecting it to be two, three hours in, and I'll be like done. I'm doing well. Glad you're doing well too, Biz. I hope, at least I hope you're doing well. How's your weekend going so far? Oh, and Biz, uh, Matt sends his regards to all the fellas again. So I got to talk to him yesterday. So uh, he sends his regards to you. Mm -hmm. 
probably just stand there, Mr. Sato. Oh, yes. I'd be delighted. So, shall we begin? Once again, Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. We're at the final point of this whole thing. I know this is the final point, Justin. Oh my god, this yeah. is long. You, you, you're almost there. You're doing real good. All right, I shall take it very slowly. It's plain to see that... Okay, I'm just going to stop there. <laughs> that this room is in, complete, is in complete disarray. Doing well. What man is doing fantastic well. He's been doing well. Uh, we're going to hopefully get more time to hang out with everyone. So uh, when he's more free and everything, hopefully we all can actually just hang out and do what we did last time. Either play games together or just literally just chit chat for a while, dude. The bed, the table and chairs, the lamp, everything is upside down. Almost as if every item in the room had until recently been happily positioned on the ceiling before falling straight down onto the floor. Every item in the room was on the ceiling? Are you sh are, are you suggesting that? Indeed, the key here is gravity. Justin, the de great detective is a demigod. He's making everything float. It would appear that the technology has at last succeeded in freeing us from the great pole of the Earth. No, it's more than likely an illusion trick. Maybe, we'll see. For the gravity in this room was reversed and then suddenly restored to normality. Goodness. The inverted furniture clearly reveals the truth about the part gravity played in this whole business. I quite understand your skepticism, Mr. Sato. I too was incredulous at first. However, my conviction in my analysis was cemented when I observed this. An anti-gravity device, almost identical to one that featured in a dream of mine only the other day, in fact. But, but then why does it have a clock on it? Oh, almost a most relevant question indeed. That is a timing device that controls when the gravity direction will switch. There was clearly a requirement for the engineer to be able to restore normal gravity automatically. And the commotion we heard earlier from the other side of the door was the moment the restoration occurred. Yes, the reason why everything in here has been turned upside down is because the empty gravity device. So you see, we need to, we need, we need lo look no further to explain the state in which we now find this room. The direction in the gravity acts in here was reversed by Mr. Drebber before being restored to normality in an automatic fashion sometime later, later by the timer device. I have witnessed precisely this scene in a dream I once had when I fell out of bed. Seems legit. I mean, gravity was clearly, uh, uh anti-gravity was clearly invented back in the 1900s. Now let's consider the next conundrum. What was our engineer's friend's aim? Indubitably, the greatest clue we have to explain this action is above our heads. Yes, how is it possible that there are footprints all the way up there on the ceiling? A question whose answer will lead us neatly to the truth, my dear madam reason there are footprints on the ceiling is because of the nearby skylight. Of course, Drebber's aim was singular, to escape. However, there is no one way into this room except the skylight, that is. Ah. Oh my god, he reversed everything. By inverting gravity here, Drebber was able to fall conveniently to the ceiling 
and make his escape via otherwise inaccessible skylight via the footprints behind on the way. Oh my god, everything's upside down. But the ceiling in here is very high, Mr. Sholmes. If the gravity reverse was sudden, wouldn't Trevor have fallen up to the ceiling rather violently? Mm, falling up is both scientifically and philosophically a rather interesting concept, I feel. But man, but the man was cornered with nowhere to run, so escape from the skylight was his only option. You may recall I found this in the room earlier, which I believe it offers a solution. Oh, the rope. To reach the in intended destination, what better tool than this rope? By anchoring one end to the wall, the man was able to lower himself safely to the ceiling. Which explains how Drebber was able to escape the room before our arrival. He reversed the pole of gravity and fled via the skylight. And personally, I should very much like to reverse the pole of gravity again now, just for fun. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this topsy-turvy puzzle. She looks like she's pleased. She's completely spellbound. Um, Mr. Sholmes, there's just one thing that troubles me. I would expect nothing less. You're destined to be troubled by just one thing for the rest of your life. Ouch. <laughs> the thing is, is such a thing actually possible on anti-gravity device, I mean? I would say that the victim's current scientific knowledge at the turn of the 20th century is no more possible than instantaneous kinesis. But your whole deduction hinges on it. Ah, but my dear fellow, when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. However improbable it, however improbable it may seem. Ha. There's that one that I was looking for. Which one was it? Exactly what he had said. However improbable it may seem. So yeah, you've there's a, the yes. Impossible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, I did not know that was a thing for Sherlock, but then again, that sounds probably something he would say. No, yes. That is a huge thing within the books. Yeah, it's one of those things that there is probably ways to say it. They just Try to fit it in at least. Huh. It's marvelous. It's a marvelous line. Wouldn't you agree? One of my more endearing pearls of wisdom. I had Iris come up with the exact phrasing. My original was clumsy. Yes, I have a feeling I read it in something that Miss Susato lent me once. Objection. Actually, there is one other thing, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, the spell's broken at last. The rope you found on the floor, wasn't it? It was on the floor, wasn't it? Indeed it was, in loyal, lonely coils near the wall. But if Mr. Draper had used to escape in the way you described, wouldn't it be still tied to the wall? Mysterious inevitably unravel in the end, as I think you'll find two ropes. And as evidence of such, you only need to look at the mystery we faced in this room. Now skillfully unraveled. That argument is as circular as the coils as the coils of a rope. I think perhaps we might need to give Mr. Sholmes the unusual little helping hand. I'm sure with some minor corrections, the great detective's deductions will lead us to the truth. Yes, you're right. <clears throat> and we must do it quickly before Anik Dremer gets too far away. If you're ready, then let's us resume. Herlock Sholmes is logic and reasoning spectacular. Couldn't we do this, like, I don't know, the first time around? Hold it, Mr. Sholmes!
Plain to see the complete rooms to complete this array. I already read that the blazer's lamp. Everything is upside down. And almost everything is those positions falling straight down onto the floor. The room is here sitting, but why are you suggesting that? Blah blah blah. With key he is here. Everything starts floating. It's gravity. Mr. Pierre's technology has at last succeeded to freeing us the great pole of Earth. For the gravity is reversed and then suddenly restored to normality. Goodness. That verdict first clearly reveals the truth. Do you think gravity could be reversed in such a fair room? I find the whole idea utterly enthralling. Only Mr. Sholmes could conceive such an explanation. But the man himself admitted that it was such a scientific impossibility. So, yes, you're quite right. Let's completely discount the idea at once. Oh, that's unusually merciless of you, Mr. Sato. When you eliminate, when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. The great detective himself said so, didn't he? While refusing to depart, the, refusing to part with his dreams of anti-gravity devices. Yes, I suppose so. Well, let's see if examining this topsy-turvy scene a little more closely. Review some proof that shows exactly what the gravity in this room was or wasn't doing. Well. Wait, someone. I wanted to see. Wow. Take that! The upright face clearly reveals the truth about the part the gravity played in this whole business. Upon my word, Mr. Naruto, you surpassed yourself by completely turning turning my argument on its head. Trying to impress your assistant here, perhaps. No, no one is trying to steal your spotlight here, Mr. Sholmes. Trust me. As you rightfully say, though it appears at first glance that all the furniture in this room is upside down. This unassuming slender vase is standing cleanly to attention. And unlike the large safe, there is nothing affixing it to the floor. And it's ex the exception that breaks the rule. In short, much of it as it pains me. The gravity in this room was never inverted at all. My, my deepest sympathies for your loss. Oh, more Mr. Sholmes. But the show must go on, so I let us continue with our deductions. Now that we know that this contrivance is not in fact anti-gravity device, there remains but one other mystery. What about the possibility? You don't say. Someone deliberately turned over every piece of furniture in here. Which might sound obvious, but leaves one mystery very much unsolved. Namely, why would anyone choose to do that? Quite. And, nat and naturally, there is an explanation. Yes, the reason why everything in here has turned into upside down is because of the anti-gravity device. He's absolutely determined that this device must have something to do with it, isn't he? I'm afraid the lure of an exciting scientific explanation is too strong. Well, there's no doubt that somebody did this. Somebody turned all over the f this. Somebody did, did this. Somebody turned all this furniture over. So whoever it was must have had a reason. I'm afraid nothing comes to mind at all, though. Well, let's look around and see if the answer presents itself. Look, there's something written on the other side of this armchair. Oh yes, safe 
432582. Safe. As in safe and secure? As in secure lock lockable box, I think. Immediately more likely. Well, there is a large safe bolt to the floor on the other side of the room, so yes. So you mean this number would let us open it? I wonder why it's written here, though. Also, if they knew where to look through everything, it, it I don't know, like, still. Why couldn't you just look over the chair? Yes, the reason why everything in here must have been turned upside down is because of the safe combination. Oh, wait. I see. Precisely, I believe, Mr. Narohodo, that you had a very similar experience once, did you not? Yes, last year. When I brought... And I bought a lottery ticket and noted the ticket upside down on the inside cover of a book, just in case. That's it. For people, are for people are forgetful souls at heart and always ha make a written note of important information. Just keeping the ticket itself would be more sensible, I think. And what pray happened next, Mister Narhodo? When the day of the draw came around, I forgot in which book I'd written in the number in, and had to turn my room upside down to find it. That's it, for people are forgetful souls at heart, and always forgetting where they've noted things down. No, nope, not if you always note things in the same place. I actually won the second prize, you know. But I couldn't remember the magazine I'd slip the ticket into, so... So I had to turn my right upside Thank you, Mr. Narhodo. I believe, but I believe I proved my point now. Which is the very similar scenario as has clearly unfolded in this room. Finding himself requiring access to the safe, the occupant of this room needed the combination code. He remembered he that he had written it on the underside of a piece of furniture, but forgot which one. Leading, leading to the state in which we now find the room. Yes, Mr. Trevor overturned all the furniture in here. In the desperate hurry to locate a combination code that would unlock the safe. That's one mystery down. Now, let's continue. Let's just come jump west of Corinth. Blah, blah, blah. Well, if a change in the direction of gravity can explain it, then how did those footage get there? Yes, I feel as though partic a per that particular mystery has just become even harder to solve. I can't think of any other way to explain it at all. Oh, life was so much simpler with those Halcyon ha 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 days when gravity could be reversed. It was a mi it was minutes ago, and those Halcyon days never existed in the first place. Well, I suppose we must simply put our faith in Mr. Sholmes and observe the area in more detail. Putting our faith in Mr. Sholmes is what gets us into these situations in the first place. This is cast balloon, isn't it? reason there are footprints on the ceiling is because of the nearby shoe. And on closer inspection, there are clearly footprints on all over the balloon as well. In other words, the aim was never to the skylight at all, but the balloon. 
A wound! But for what purpose? A green balloon? Hmm, that seems somewhat familiar data. It was a piece of the green balloon's envelope that Mr. Larhodo and Iris found at the scene. And inside the green balloon, Master Gotts claims he saw above the stage when uh, inside the green balloon that uh, and inside the balloon claims he saw above the stage when he the incident occurred was the second bird cage the crux of the whole instant instantaneous kinesis deception. You you mean to say? If we were to, if we were, if we assume that the balloon in here is a model of one used on that, on the day, there is a strong possibility something may be concealed inside it. Something our abs absconder was desperate to retrieve before making his, making a hasty getaway. But, but the balloon's out, but the balloon's out of reach. Hence why he resorted to a projectile, namely the shoe. Ah. Most probably, Drebber intended to tear a hole in the envelope by insailing it with a shoe. However, his efforts were throated when the shoe itself became a prisoner of, of those lofty heights. Dear, we desperately need to examine the balloon, that balloon. If only there was some way we could see inside. You may recall I found this in the room earlier, which I believe offers a solution. Oh, the rope. We reached the intended destination. What a better tool than this rope. Mr. Sholmes has managed to bring the deduction back to the rope. All right, I have to admit it. That was clever. So we just have to throw the rope up the balloon and then pull it down with, to the ground, which is such easier said than that, I feel. I could, and it could take us a very long time as well. True. Perhaps we need more surf. We need a more surfile method. In fact, we already have one, of course, don't we? Take that! To reach the intended destination, what better tool than this crossbow? That was found at the scene, in fact, and in all likelihood belongs to Mr. Drebber. If the man had only brought it away with him that day, we could have avoided losing a shoe at such a critical time as this. So, shall we? Your curiosity is deeply stirred, no doubt, my dear fellows. What is it that Mr. Dre Enoch Drebber has hidden inside that balloon? Balloon! Bam! The... A waxwork? Indeed it is. A waxwork head inside a metal mask. A mask that is shut tight and fastened with a strong and in and quite impenetrable lock. So we can't see the face side. That means... Just a moment, this... Is this the head of a waxwork model? Does that mean... Oh, goodness! I see you have joined the dots, Miss Susato! Excellent! Ah, uh, of course, a headless waxwork model! The case of the abducted Madame Tuspel's model that you largely solved. It was only the head of the killer that was still missing. Indeed it was. But I believe Miss Adam Tuspels will now have to settle her sizable account with me. This, as you have now surmised, is the head of the infamous professor. Yes. But why is it here? This conclusively confirms my suspicions. The man responsible for stealing the professor from Madame Tuspels and returning it San sans tate tete earlier today was none other than Enoch Drebber. This is incredible. Professor Harebrain's case and the waxwork abduction are... They're in 
inextricably linked by Enoch Dreber's workshop. The waxwood head has been entered in a court of record. Well, it appears our logical pleasure cruise has come to an end, my dear fellows. Why do you have to say that? <laughs> All that remains is, yes, to speak with the architect of this adventure. The architect? You mean Mr. Drebber? As it seems, quite impossible that he escaped via one of the skylights. Obviously, the man must have, must still be here in the room. What? And his location should be abundantly clear. If you simply reflect on the journey we've made together during this deduction. The Drepper is right here, somewhere in this room. So, Mr. Show, Mr. Naruto, will you do the honors? Because clearly, I don't know where it is. Yes, of course. Mr. Drepper's hiding place must be the... The vase. No, no, he's clearly in the anti-gravity device. Uh, like, how could oh. you be that... How could you miss that, Justin? Like, I thought you were better Sorry. at this. It, it is right in front. Yeah, no, it's in the center of the room. Just, I thought... It's I, the most obvious spot to hide in. I thought you played this game before. How could you mess that uh, up so badly? The vase just looked really pretty. I, I get you. I hear you. But come on. Come on, Justin. You can do better than that. Sorry. It's late. Ah, uh, no excuses for you. Dang it. <laughs> Oh, the mess in front of the safe. Yes, the plans. Can we do it? Okay. Uh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So I was wondering why I couldn't present it. Excuse me. Can I? Um. <laughs> do, I, do I just have to pick all the hiding places? I forgot. Wait. Okay, now it actually makes me press the X button? I was mashing the X button there. What, what, what a weird... I wonder if that was because my controller is wireless, so it, it can't get it, or it was just a glitch in the game. We regain access to this room. We heard noises in from from in here, which tells us the engineer was still in the building at that point in time. He was in fact searching for the combination to his safe. And pressed for time, mate had no attempt to write the furniture that he overturned. No attempt to write the furniture that he overturned in the process, from which he could we can deduce this this search for a combination happened very recently indeed. In summary, Mr. Enoch Drubber. Drubber. Is at this very moment inside the safe. Thus concludes Sherlock Sholmes' great deduction of this topsy-turvy puzzle. Inside the safe. Elementary. There you go. There's another quote, uh, Mike. There we go. About time. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Narodo, I think perhaps it's time we end this, this game of hide and seek, don't you? By opening the safe, you mean. What else? Let's see. The combination was one, four, three, two, five, eight, two. I knew that! I knew that! Alright then, here it goes. You found me.
<laughs> I forgot he got up so. Uh, I mean, with that to... with with that amount of must like control your body, you can. That's really good. Found our mystery man. Right then, sir, Mister Enoch Trevor, I presume. Correct. You better start talking. You tricked the Professor Hairbrain with the bo that bogus machine you built. And you shall have to explain the theft of the waxwork from Madame Tuspels as well. Whilst, <clears throat> whilst I would be delighted to answer your many questions. Personally, I would advise that you deactivate my the parcel first. Deactivate your parcel? I refer, oh. of course, to the time bomb I left in the most prominent position. Ah! Ha! 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 I see. Stunned silence. You're all gearing up to die with me then. No! Mr. Sholmes, we... with only seven seconds to spare. That was too close to for comfort. I've got one foot in the grave already. What are you trying to help? Help, get, help us get the killer or get us killed? Mr. Sholmes, seduction can be... Completely life-altering, can't they? Well, my dear fellows, that was a close shave. The reason resemblance of an anti-gravity machine is quite startling, I must say. Anti-gravity devices don't exist. Whew. I wouldn't push it, Mr. Sholmes. Oh, I can leave. Guys, I can leave now. <laughs> What on earth happened in here? I didn't realize we still had more of this game. You found me, haven't you? No need to screw me down any further. Everything is in here is precisely what it seems. Yeah, we'll, we'll be giving it a thorough going over. Don't you worry, Drebba. What fails to click with me is how you were able to locate my workshop. That was not expecting. When I heard whistling from the other room, I knew it was time to bolt. Whistling? Ah, that would have been me. Oh. For some reason, I woke in fine fettle today. No words, just tightly squeezing chips. Clearly, I must have had, I must have a screw loose though, as I couldn't remember the combination for the safe. And another one loose, as I couldn't remember on which piece of furniture I had written it down. We also found a rope over by the wall. Yes, I had hoped to exit through the skylight, but sadly the rope was too short. So I then set about searching for the combination code to open the safe. And burning the incriminating blueprints, don't forget. Regrettably though, you failed to retrieve the head from the balloon among the rafters. And after that, you hid yourself inside the safe? Having first set this parcel ticking? Well, I had no intention of being nailed by the police. Got a death wish, have ya? Hiding right inside a ticking time bomb? Right beside a ticking time bomb? Please, why do you suppose I chose to hide inside the safe? It's no ordinary safe. It's specially designed. A dynamite explosion wouldn't leave a scratch on it. 
You still get caught, though, eventually, because someone will come to it. So, in fact, the safe was the only safe place. Uh, uh, I see what he did there. Precisely. But once you've climbed inside, you wouldn't have been able to get out again. I invite you to look more closely. The safe is fitted with a handle inside to allow the door to be unlocked from within. Ah, so it is. I had always intended to blow this place to smithers. In any case, I just wasn't expecting uninvited guests to come along and screw up my plans. Do you, do you mean to say you are planning to blow all, us all up? No, no, that was unforeseen. What do you mean? It means what it means. Most people run, you see, when they see a ticking time bomb at their feet. Ah, I calculated a time required for a retreat to a safe distance and set the device accordingly. But you seemingly endless discourse in here drew a spanner in the works. Is something wrong, Gregson? Do I have something on my face besides the usual eyes, nose, ne uh, ears, nose, and mouth? I think we have a fairly good idea what's been going on here now. But what about the two incidents you've evidently been involved in recently? Professor Harebrain's instantaneous kinesis experiment of the at the Great Exhibition and the waxwork model you stole, which head, which this head belongs to. That's no ordinary head, you know. That's the head of the professor. Clad in a mask with a lock so strong, I'm unable to open it safely to reveal the killer's identity. I've been considering carrying it around as protection after all. That's enough. What's going on here, Gregson? I'm sure you're aware that I have sole jurisdiction to investigate here. Ah, uh, um, yes, well. Mr. Dr. Seath again, so the forensic team, investigation team are here. And you know full well, uh, this engineer is a key witness. Why are you allowing this lawyer to access him, access to him? If Lord Strongheart knew this, you'd be finished. You lot leave at once. My dear madam, there's no need to be for such a threatening tone, I assure you. After all, that's no way to greet an old acquaintance, is it, Dr. Seath? Hello, Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes knows Dr. Seath? If it's protecting the machine next door that's causing such a sour expression on your face, you are quite misguided. It's really nothing more than a shell. You get out. But of course, we'll show ourselves to the door. I see you haven't softened at all. Mr. Narhodo! Yes? It would appear that our delightfully entertaining investigations have run its course for today. But, but Mr. Stroms! Let us leave this place in the doctor's capable hands. I said get out now, all of you. Your presence here is not required either, Gregson. Understood. But I'll just say one thing before I head off. If it wasn't for this lawyer and his companions, we'd never found we never found have found this place, and the whole workshop would have been blown to bits. There was a time bomb set in here, and that it is lot disarmed. Spectre. <laughs> Something giving you a chuckle, has it, Grabber? Ah, so sorry. Didn't mean to offend. You're quite right, of course. You did disarm the time bomb. Didn't you? 
Yes, you did disarm that one. Eh? What are you? That one? You, you, you mean... It was an hour later that we heard the news of the enormous explosion that ripped through the experimentation stage at the Great Exhibition, Professor Harebrain's invention, and all its secrets blown away forever. That took four hours long with all that reading. Just to... <laughs> Holy crap, when you said that was a long investigation. Yep. Glad that you said that was the longest one because I, I do not want to go through a long one like that again. <laughs> oh, this case three is really long. I was hoping to do maybe the trials today because the investigations were like not too long and then it was just like nope this one is like twice the length yep all right well we're gonna have to end it off here because i am not playing it until 6 or 8 a.m because otherwise emoto will yell at me I you should, if you were to do that, yep. I mean, it would be like another like 12 hour possible stream and then she's, we said that we're not doing that again. And I also agreed not to do that again because that's really, really long. <sighs> anyway, let me just end it off here so that we can go to bed. Uh, let's see, who am I raiding? Uh, I've done D... Scoino is currently going. Uh, I might just send over to Scoino because I haven't raided him in a while. So I might just say hi to him. So, yeah, thanks, Biz. I'm going to raid Scoino because I'm going to send you over there. Yeah, I was I was going to say, like, I was going to be like, yeah, uh, Scoino is currently, uh, currently streaming. So I'll just say hi to him. And all that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take it easy. You take it easy, too. I'll see you Monday. Oh, wait for what? After the song. Uh, how long is that song? I don't know. I don't know when that song ends. That's the issue. Got a fat car right now. So, like, in, in, like, a minute or two. All right, I'll try to time it then 30 seconds all right so i'll start to raid right now and then i should be able to do it when it ends so yeah anyway i'll start to raid uh i hope everyone takes it care yeah i'll see you monday uh everyone sleep well take it easy i'll catch you guys later thank you guys so much for lurking and watching thank you justin for playing um mar party and uh hanging out and thank you mike for joining too also i'll see you guys later Anyway, everyone catch you guys later.